One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. Imagine memorizing 70 decks of playing cards to raise money for Alzheimer's. Not just to fund research into curing the disease, but also to support frontline workers who help care for the victims of this cruel condition. Well, that's the goal memory athlete Braden Adams set for himself. And think about this for a second. That's 70 times 52, 3,640 cards all shuffled up. At least that's what my calculator says. And that's a lot of memory palace prep. Braden and I dig into that topic. How do you prepare memory palaces for this goal? And we even get into the shadow technique, which he's using for encoding the cards, a powerful way of applying mnemonic tactics that you're not going to want to miss. But it's the meaning of the mission I want to focus on above all. And I feel that memorizing cards is a perfectly aligned symbol for the battle against conditions like Alzheimer's. After all, the disease mixes up your thoughts and your memories. But when you have the kind of skills that Braden has developed for himself and that you can develop for yourself, no matter how shuffled those cards of the mind get, you have a fighting chance to still lay everything out in perfect order. And there is good evidence that shows brain exercises like using memory techniques to memorize cards fortifies the brain against conditions like Alzheimer's and dementia. So to train, Braden has been using the IAMWMC.com software and live streaming the journey to 70 decks on Twitch. And it's very, very inspiring. And I know it'll inspire you too. And the technical considerations we get into in this interview should help you with such a project on your own. I wanted to learn more about this training journey and help spread the word about his mission. As we speak, People have already been donating to the cause, and if you'd like to toss in a few magnetic clams, as I've done myself, you'll find the donation link in the description, or you can simply type this handy link that I've created for you for supporting the cause. MagneticMaryMethod.com forward slash BC Alts. BC Alts is short for British Columbia and its Alzheimer's Foundation, which coincidentally, British Columbia is where both Braden and I come from. And some of this conversation really feels like talking with a friend from high school, from the hometown, and we really get into the weeds of this and even talk about some things like movies and so forth that relate to how we use our associations in memory training. And you can also consider donating to any Alzheimer's charity near you during this drive. And I hope that you will, because again, it's not just about the research, but it's helping people who care for people who already have this condition. Now, you can also watch Braden memorize and recall the 70 decks live on August 28th on his stream by visiting twitch.tv Braden Explosion. That's twitch.tv forward slash Braden Explosion. And I imagine he'll be doing things on his Twitch much longer after the event as well. So it's worth following. And follow him on Twitter, etc. Until the event takes place, you know, if you really want to get deep into the nitty gritty about how memory techniques work and how you can use them to complete massive memory projects like memorizing 70 decks of cards, I think you're going to love this discussion. So as always, thanks for being here. Hit that thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, do consider joining our mission to help you create better living through better memory as we fight the good fight together against forces like Alzheimer's that are always at work to destroy the mind. And for the love of memory, please help this one out by sharing it around. And never forget, your mind could be the next victim. So the best time to get training was yesterday. The second best time is now. And I'm confident that the tools and techniques you'll hear about in this discussion with Braden Adams will make it all far more exciting and vibrant than you can possibly imagine until you too are on the road with us as we use these incredible memory techniques to stretch the boundaries of what is possible to not only promote better brain health for all, but to make it a reality for one and all. Braden, so good to see you. It's been a long time. Thanks for joining me again on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. How have you been? Oh, I've been good, man. Been keeping busy. I know it's been uh, not quite two years, but uh, yeah, man, I've been, you know, been been at her in the in the memory world anyways, working hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you got a big announcement, right? And we're going to get into that, but oh, yeah. you, you, you learn a lot. You were just telling me that you gobble down podcasts like a monster. Uh, what's, yeah. this, what's the story with that? I'm, I mean, I'm two a, times speed. <laughs> How do you keep I'm an up addict. With yeah. Oh yeah. I listen to podcasts at like over two times speed because I got too many on the go. So I got to, I got to blow through them. And I was, um, so when I switched phones earlier this year, I realized, uh, I've been realizing over the months, I keep thinking of podcasts. I forgot to add to my new phone and 
until we set up this interview a while ago, I realized, holy smokes, I didn't add Anthony's podcast back on. I feel like such a such a dink. So um, I've been catching up on episodes. So I, I firstly just want to say you've been kicking butt, man. Like the, some of these guests you've had have been like phenomenal. I, I, I was on the edge of my seat, like on, on all of them. Um, oh, wow. And you mentioned, yeah. And you mentioned um, in the one with David Freyheit, is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the law guy. Yeah, he's pretty cool. And you mentioned in there, and it was more of a side note because you you were you were telling something as part of uh, explaining like a thought process, like you're giving an example. But it stood out to me, and I was like, I haven't. So I don't know if I'm. This isn't something you want to talk about, but you'd mentioned um, uh, planning your own world memory championship, mm. and I don't know if that was just a random example you thought of, or, but you made it seem like it was something you were thinking about because you're talking about all the struggles and things that would come with that and disappointing people and those types of things. And anyway, I was, that blew me away. I was like, Holy smokes, I would love to help or uh, talk about that more. If I have, if that's something you'd want to do. I, I do. I do. Fun. In fact, yeah. I had on my list to ask you about it because the concept that I have, you know, some people are going to be like, yeah, but of course, but I don't, I yeah. haven't seen this done as a, well, as I said to to uh, our uh, mutual podcast friend, David Reihait, I said, you know, it's not meant to be a comment on any of the current uh, competitions, but rather a supplement to it or uh, not sure. even an alternative. Yep. But imagine this. And, and you know, the, the thing is, is that it's just super complicated uh, to do these things. So when I have hesitations around it, there's a lot of moving parts. And I actually have a meeting with a guy who might be able to help me. He's really smart. His name's Glenn Long. And we're going to talk next week um, about the concept, but just in brief strokes. And then, you know, maybe after we can get more into it, my sure. core concept would be, and again, this isn't a comment on anything, but it is, you know, there's so many people who aren't competing because they're not going to train for large digits. They're not going to train for cards. They're not going to train for maybe more than 20, 30, 50 names, something like that. Right. So what could we do to still have those things, but have them more, you know, mirroring what I can do this sort of thing. Right. Um, so yeah. I can, I can, let's just say 22 digits or whatever I can, probably pop that off as long as I'm well-rested, et cetera, within a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Cards, I don't think I would put in, but what about, you know, just a poem? And then what about foreign language, right? So for example, let's say we announce it and they've got a year and I don't care whether you already know the language or not. If you are willing to self-disclose and say, yeah, the, the second language is going to be German, then I'll say, Here's uh, the uh, Fremdwörter book, uh, Deutsch als Fremdsprache, and uh, you know, uh, here we go. And I will say, there's a word on page seventy-two or whatever, and uh, in English that word would be X. What is it in German? And that's how we would just generally test a vocabulary, um, even okay. if that person has a second language. And then you know, let's say they have to do twenty-five words or whatever in a foreign language, then we would say. Out of five of those, you have to construct a sentence, basically. Okay. Uh, something like that. So we would have maybe numbers, but much smaller numbers, let's say 22 digits. We would have some vocabulary in English. We just rattle them off. And this would all be live streamed, by the way. Um, so oh, good. because we don't have, you know, travel, we don't know when it's coming back. And why the heck not have like a, a live stream thing? And uh, so we got some vocabulary. We'd do some names and it would just be in the 20 to 30 name range, something like that. Yeah. And um I'd want them to have one poem, eyes closed, or it could be song lyrics or something like that. We'd have to be actually careful. So it'd have to be in the public domain just because of live streaming because yeah. we don't want to break the system. Um, and then I would want them to give a speech. Now, part of the logic of giving a speech is one thing I think that, and again, this is not the right way to say it, but I think one thing that's missing or could be added to the memory competition world is communication, you know? So not yeah. just that you could memorize your speech, but that you can actually string together something that's worth saying. So that means that more people could be potentially included, but it also becomes harder at the same time because you're going yeah. to be judged not only your delivery of the speech, but its actual content. Sure. So anyway, that's I'm cool, not, 
I'm not like yeah. a competitive kind of person. So it's hard for me to think about whether that is going to draw people or not. But then yeah. there's also the thing about, and I haven't solved this problem yet. Maybe you have ideas, but there's going to be a problem of like, what's the prize? And is there a way that we could actually have, okay, so I donate a prize. Maybe some sponsors do, you know, Nelson uh, contributes some books. Scott Gosnell, he's already said he would contribute all his Bruno translations as like a nice package for prizes. I'll find some headshots. I'll send them. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll do some, <laughs> uh, sign some sign some decks from your uh, project that we're going to talk about. Anyway, I'm going on a bit <laughs> yeah. long about this, but the idea would be how could we have an expanding prize so sure. that for every person who enters, they have a fee. And then that fee, part of that goes to admin, part of that goes to whatever. But then part of it goes to a charity, let's say, for, for example. And then part of it goes to growing the prize. So the more mm-hmm. people that we can get in and you say, hey, I want to um, I want to compete, then the bigger the pot grows, right? For yeah. all, okay. all three winners, like for second, third prize or whatever. Right. Now, the problem with that is, though, is that if we have a growing pot, then that means we have a growing debt that we have to pay to assess more and more people. So then the testing phase gets longer and longer and longer, right? Yeah. Or you need more people to be involved in the testing. So I don't know how to resolve those sorts of issues. Maybe you have ideas. Um, okay. But, and it doesn't have to be that there's an expanding prize, but I think that'd be super cool, right? Because yeah, what would make it more shareable than that? Than people saying, hey, I'm going to join this and I want you to join it too. And, you know, people can have an exit clause. They can say up to in the competition itself, they can say, okay, sorry, I've lost my speech. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to do it. You know, and they just, they now are donors to the prize, so to speak. Um, okay, yeah. And whatever yeah. charitable organization that we set up, maybe the uh, British mm-hmm. Columbia <laughs> Alzheimer's yeah. uh, Association, et cetera. Um, or maybe multiple ones around the world, uh, yeah. whatever. I mean, the more complexity you take on, the less likely it's going to happen. But uh, it's, just, it's just like that. What could we do to include more people? And make it a little bit harder at the same time in terms of actual content. Because in my mind, that's the ideal, right? Is mm-hmm. not just what you can memorize, but what can you do with what you memorized? So I, you know, yeah. I admire what you're doing, and that's what we're talking about, because you're now taking something that has, let's say, value uh, as a sequence of information, and then yeah. you're making it valuable so that it has actual meaning that makes an impact in the world, right? And so right. that's kind of what I've always loved with Nelson Dellis, with Climb for Memory and, you know, that kind of thing, which is just lacking yeah. so much. It's there, but how do we like make it explode? Anyway, last thing I'll say is I'm thinking of calling it the Giordano Bruno Prize and having it on February 17th, which was the day that the church burned him to death for the evil crime of thinking that the universe might be infinite and that, you know, there might be more than one God. So it would be also... <laughs> thematically and symbolically about freedom of speech, freedom of expression, the cool. important of the importance of having the things in your mind, you know, be free yeah. to, to not only remember, but to love what you remember and be free to love what you, what you have in your mind, whether it's right or wrong or what some crazy <laughs> state or whatever church thinks that you shouldn't have those thoughts. It'll be a testament to, you know, the value of expression and human language and how it comes out. Anyway, I've gone on a lot, but that's what no. I have in mind. <laughs> and I've been that's thinking about it for cool, years. Man. Like, I, I'll, just, I'll just say, like, I, I think it's cool because one thing, um, well, okay, first thing is, yeah, you're like, a lot of people think memory sports, you know, is, is cool or whatever, but again, they're maybe intimidated. They're like, I don't want to put in all the work, you know, to, you know, ma- to for, for one or two events, I'm not going to do as good as most of the people there. They don't see a point in it. Right. Um and I can explain why I do it or whatever, like what meaning it brings to my life. But for your average Joe, it's like, it's, it seems kind of fruitless. Um, so in this case, you're right. There's a couple of things. It's uh, most people, I, again, depending on what language background they have, but most people begin on the same level. And um, if they're working over the course of six months or a year or whatever, when you, you announce, okay, here's the events, here's what we're doing. Um, so it gives them something to work towards. But then even at the end, it's like, they walk away like when I leave a memory comp- competition, I just walk away with like you know, I just memorize a bunch of stuff and like personal accomplishments, but I don't I don't leave with additional knowledge or anything. Maybe maybe self reflection and things I learned about myself. But these people, it's like oh they at the end of this at the end of this program or at the end of this year or whatever they compete and even if they don't you know if they don't win or whatever, I mean 
they walk away having learned a, a new language or a lot of a new language. And like, right. there's, there's some practicality to it, which is cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's, it's a cool idea to, to, to do something where, yeah, there would still be some takeaway at the end, right? People are working towards something where there's some very obvious real life um, practicality to it afterwards, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a pretty cool. I think that you got something there for sure. Yeah, I mean, we just have to try it. And the problem is, yeah, it's not a problem. It's a it's a path to a solution. But I can't do it by myself. Like it's it's gonna need yeah. it's gonna need people to help. And then I have my entrepreneurial weaknesses where I don't like to tell people what to do. I don't like to be the boss, etc. So anyway, that's where Glenn comes in. Maybe he's gonna be able to help or not. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Sorry, Glenn. I'm mentioning you, but anyway, he's got a great website. Um, and, uh, he, I've yeah. known him for years. Anyway, uh, he knows internet stuff and, and he knows a lot about pedagogical things. And there's, that's the pedagogical element too, is like a Dave Farrow, for example, he had great competitions. Uh, I don't know if you ever went to one, but you know, he would yeah. have new people come in, he would teach them the techniques and then they would be giving him a run for his money, you know, in terms of actually competing with him, uh, by the end. And it was like the real deal, because as you know, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are. You can have a bad run uh, anytime. Although you don't have that many <laughs> bad runs. I mean, I look at what you're posting. <laughs> well, let's get into yeah. that. I mean, thank you for yeah. asking about uh, the competition thing, and let's talk more about it. But um, we want to, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of things that have meaning and so forth, tell us what you announced, and then why you're doing it, and you know well, how sure. we can, how we can support. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll explain, I can even get the backstory too, but, um, I announced a few weeks back now, um, I'm going to be doing a, I'm doing, I'm calling it Braden's memory marathon fundraiser. So I'm raising money, you know, funds and awareness for the Alzheimer's society of British Columbia. And, um, yeah, they do a lot of good, you know, a lot of good services and stuff. And, um, Alzheimer's is something that it's something I'm passionate about. Like it's affected myself, my wife, uh, like, you know, our grandparents and, extended family and stuff like that. And I mean, most people know either have a, it's like cancer. Most people know someone who's had it or know someone who knows someone, you know, it's like dementia is way more common than people realize. Um, so the, this, the startling statistic I was told, which is where I settled on the particular detail of my event was in BC, there's, um, they estimate it's actually more, but there, there's about 70,000 people in BC living with dementia right now. Which is a lot because, like, there's, uh, I, I think there's around four million people or something like that in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, seventy thousand is a lot of people. So, what I'm doing is, um, so as part of the fundraiser, what I'm doing is on on August 28th, I'm I, I'm going to be broadcasting this all live on Twitch. I'm going to memorize uh, seventy decks of cards and recall them all. So, one one deck for every um, thousand people that live with dementia every day in BC. So, uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. So, I've been raising money for that. Um, I've been training for it, so I'll be so I'll be broadcasting it on my Twitch channel. And every uh, most Thursdays, I've been going on and um, slowly working on. Like I, I practice memory sports mostly every day, and but I've been working on the the actual lo longevity of it, right? Because you know I, I mostly practice um, on Memory League, which is really quick and easy one minute events. It's a really awesome way to train if time is limited. And I'll talk. We can talk about Memory League more later, but. I don't, it, I don't train the long events that you would typically see at like an international or a, or a world memory championship. So I've been slowly doing those to build my mental stamina. So I was doing, um, yeah. So anyway, so that, that's the event I've been doing though. And, uh, I've been, I've been progressing each week and by August 28th, I will have hopefully, uh, be mentally ready for, for the event. Um, yeah. So I got a few more palaces. I gotta, I gotta crank out too. And we got to get a little lazy with that. So I've been more cool. working. I've, I've been more worried about the actual, uh, doing it, you know, um, which I, I feel really confident now after my, after what I did last week in my training. Um, but yeah, I got a few more palaces I got to do. I'm, I'm a few shy of what, what I need. So yeah. Do, anyway, do you, that, that, in, in summary, that's what it is. Right. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So I want to get all nerdy about, you know, the memory palace yeah. process and so forth, but yeah when you, when you think about dementia and Alzheimer's, just to dwell on that a little bit more, I have yeah. some quite a few stories with that myself. My mom had early uh, onset dementia and oh, no. to turn that around. Uh, so, you know, I've seen really? that as well, but you know, is there a story in particular you can share or is it just the uh, yeah. stats? Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I, I, 
I don't, like, I guess on social media, like, I, I do post this mostly memory stuff and a little bit of family. I, I don't get like too personal, but yeah, I don't mind talking about it. Um, so my, my grand, my granddad, um, he had, he, he passed away last September and he had, um, he had Alzheimer's for quite a few years. Like it was one of those things where we, you could kind of see it coming a mile away. All, I think all his siblings, but one, uh, had Alzheimer's and died of it. Um, so that it's runs and just runs in the family, unfortunately for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we'll see though. But, um, so yeah, anyway, he, he had Alzheimer's for quite a few years. Um, and I kind of watched, watched him, you know, slowly deteriorate. Um, you know, he, at first did he go over and it, uh, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, it's been forever since he went over. Like, I was over like three days ago, man. Like, you know, they mm-hmm. just, every time you see him, they haven't seen you in weeks. And then, and then it's slowly, it's, who are you again? And then slowly, yeah. And then it, it just sucks. Like watching them just lose it. Um, my uncle and aunt, uh, and my, my granny took really good care of them, but man, they, it was such a struggle. Um, so yeah, anyway, he, he ended up passing away in a home last September and thanks to COVID, nobody got to visit him. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that sucked. Um, but yeah, um, that, that, and that's why like I, uh, the the Alzheimer's Society is important to me too because uh, they provide so many good services. Like, uh, uh, and they do they do things too. Like, I, I always I was always gung ho about like finding finding a cure and finding research and stuff. But then they have a lot of programs that they say they they need funding for as well, like for for caretakers. Cause that gets overlooked a lot. It's more, yeah, I know it's more sexy to find a cure and donate yeah. to scientists, but like there's people out there, you know, um, in the trenches, like taking care, uh, caring for people with dementia. And it's hard, man. It's really hard. And, oh, yeah. um, so they got really good programs that, um, that help people who do that. And that's kind of where my heart is. So anyway, um, he was, he was taken care of and, um, and all that. And yeah. Anyway, so that, that's kind of what, how it's affected me. Um, right. yeah. So that, that's why it's kind of, it's pretty important to me to to do something. I thought, I mean, oddly, the thing I do best memorizing, um, I guess it's coincidental. I don't know. Um, you know, Alzheimer's affects that ability <laughs> like uh, pretty good. So, uh, but I figured I want to make a difference. And the best way I can do that is uh, I'll memorize stuff. So, yeah. So I started thinking about oh, how do I, you know, how do I, how do I do this? And I had the idea. I feel like I'm talking a lot. Do you, do you have any questions so far? No, I love so, listening. So I, <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I'm a listener too. So uh, good. I, I uh, so I had the idea actually a long time ago, a couple of years ago, um, to to Twitch stream memory sports. Um, I just didn't think anyone would care, and like, a lot of people don't tune into my streams because I'm like I'm sitting there for like an hour, two hours, three hours memorizing cards, and yeah. I'm so focused. I don't talk. I don't talk to like it's super boring. It's like you might as well watch paint dry. But I figured. There's, I got a few people that think it's cool and it's interesting and I saved the video. So I got proof that I'm doing it because there's always people that all doubt. Yeah. So that, that part's good. But anyway, I had the, I had the idea a couple of years ago, I think it was. And, um, people were just like, yes, dude, it's memory sports. No, it's not, a, no one's going to watch it. No one's going to care. But I thought, Oh, I'd like to do something. And then anyway, it was like something that was just on my mind for a long time. Uh, and then, um, memory. So memory sports, do you know what memory sports TV is? I've seen so that. It's a Twitch channel. I've seen it around, but I haven't popped in on any yet. Okay. Maybe so I have one. So Johanna, I don't think so. Okay. So, um, Johannes Mala, he's an awesome dude, a former two time world champion. That's kind of his baby. Um, so he live streams uh, matches on Memory League. So, on Memory League, um, you can beat different events and um, you can go head to head against people. So, they, so there's also like a, a season. So, you, can, you, you get put in a division and you can compete against people in your skill level. Um, so he'll broadcast like matches on there and people love it because it's, it's head to head and people put their webcam on so you can see the memorizing. Uh, and then Johannes commentates and he's funny and he'll have like guest commentators and he's got stats on one screen. And it, it, anyway, he does such a good production job. Um, it's like blown up. people love it. And um, it's been like a really big thing to grow the community. And because memory leaks are all about quick one minute events. So it's one minute memorization, four minute recall. So you do the, yeah, Cards, numbers, images, words, names, all the basics. Yeah. And it's just quick and easy. And as a side note, if memorization, memory sports is something that's a little interesting to you or whatever, uh, it's a great site to start on because uh, you start at level one, you go work up to level 10. It's user friendly, it's fun, and you don't have to compete against anyone if you don't want it. You can just train by yourself and no one will ever know you're there. So, anyway, that's my plug for Memory League. But 
so he's been doing that. So anyway, that that's been taken off for the last while. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I think I think I could do this, even if you know, even if I raise like you know ten bucks and three people watch my I don't know fourteen to sixteen hour broadcast. <laughs> Again, it's not going to be fun. Um, I, I to me, it's a win. So I'm like, if I can do anything to help. So uh, I started talking to the to the society about all this last summer, and they loved it. So um, had a kid on the way um, and all that. So we didn't. Uh, was good timing, but I want to, I wanted to time it for this summer. So anyway, I started talking to them again in the spring and here we are. So, uh, they kind of helped me get started and, uh, yeah, hopefully I'm going to, I mean, this isn't about me trying to say, Hey, look what I can do. I mean, it, it's, it's a challenge for myself and that's, that's awesome, but it's more about, you know, um, making people aware and, you know, raising money ultimately to help, help a good, uh, help a good cause. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is an amazing cause, and I think I didn't know that um, that this had uh, the memory sports had evolved to to you know shorten it and you know have have so many yeah. people watching it. But that that can sound quite exciting, or it, it almost it must be uh, more exciting to watch than you know some of the longer things. But for your longer thing, I mean, I think you'd be surprised by how many people might just pop in over time. And I think you've already made more than ten bucks, from what I can tell, in the uh, pre. Uh, donations. Yeah. So good on that uh, for sure. Uh, I guess, you know, one of the things that I, I think of that I, I, I love is it, it, maybe this is because I've worked on something like this. Um, not, not like this, but I have a little, I do card magic and I have a, like a magic trick and I use cards as a metaphor for, you know, the, the, the mind getting all shuffled up and messed up. And I tell the story right. about my mom. And so I have two cards in there. I have a red deck and the blue deck has two cards in there. And one of the blue cards says memory and the other card says aid. And then I tell the story of when my mom had early onset dementia and I'm shuffling the cards like crazy and uh, telling the story. And then anyway, long story short, I use the memory aid and I sort of put them on the top of the deck and the bottom of the deck. And I go like that. And then the whole deck as my mom is healed is now in complete order, even though you've watched me shuffle it, you know, 10 times till Sunday. And so, you know, I think the card thing is cool, really, really appropriate because shuffled decks is kind of, you know, yeah, visually yeah. metaphorical for the mind getting all shuffled up, uh, so to speak, and not knowing Tuesday from Sunday, so to speak. Um, so that's yeah, cool. yeah, that's good. And I actually really, that's, that's really cool. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have thought of it that way. Like the reason, I mean, the reason I'm using cards is just because um, again, with memory sports, it is hard to pick something. If I, was, if I was just memorizing strings of numbers or binary, <laughs> cards are a little more, you know, visually appealing and exciting. And, um, you, you know, so that's kind of why I'm doing that. And that's kind of what I'm good at, too. Uh, um, of all the, if I had to pick one event, cards is kind of what I'm, it's my specialty. So it was just kind of a natural fit. But um, that's really cool. Like, that's a really, I, that feels even more appropriate now that you said that. That's, that's awesome. I don't have the setup, but maybe yeah. later I can change the oh. camera around and show you the trick um, or uh, I love some, that. some other time. I, I, I actually want to talk to a guy named Jason Ladani, who he, he I've seen him lecture magic and he preaches against memorizing a deck of cards. He says, he, no, he, sorry, he says he preaches against not using mnemonics, but he has a mem deck and he just like hard memorizes it you know, mm -hmm. with basically wrote. And, uh, anyway, I, I, I just, <laughs> just to, just to maybe get him on the podcast sometime, I want to, you know, hire him as my consultant to figure out how I can perform this trick on camera. Cause I'm not very good on camera. I can do magic tricks, you know, from uh, pretty good in, in person, but on camera, I always look weird. Um, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, I, I just, I love that metaphor and I think it's very, very appropriate. And mm -hmm. also, I mean, the, what I, I'm curious about, and it might not work, but I wonder if it would make it more engaging to watch, at least during the recall part, is if you tell your, you tell how that you encoded the the cards, how you are remembering yeah, the I, order. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I've oh, been trying good? to do that a little bit during my, um, during my Twitch streams, but um, during the Twitch streams, uh, a couple of times ago, I was going for like a, uh, going for a record. I did, I was doing hour cards. And I did really good. And I was getting a little coffee during recall. It's two hour recall for that. Yeah. But when you're memorizing like 30 decks of cards in an hour, it's like, it doesn't leave, that's a lot of info. So I'm like, ah, this, this guy's doing this, and this guy's stabbing this guy. And then this guy's electric, you know, 
And before I know it, I'm like, I'm wasting way too much time here. And mm-hmm. I'm not only am I wasting time, I mean, I like entertaining. So that, that in and of itself isn't a waste, but, uh, you know, I'm burning time, I should say, but then I'm also burning mem- like, you know, some of the memories are slowly fading away while right, I'm talking. Right. So, um, anyway, I've, I, I'm not doing this good. And I, I look for excuses and I blame it on that. So uh, the last, last couple, uh, last time I've been, I've been more focused and I feel like I've done better. Um, but it, it makes for even, I mean, if it wasn't boring enough, it's even more boring with me talking less. So, but during this is, it'll be good because during the actual event, uh, I got all day. I, I'm not under any memory sports constraints. Right. Um, I can take my time. So a 70 decks, I kind of got a strategy. And, um, so what I, what I'm going to do is go through the decks, you know, quite a few times, uh, hopefully enough that, yeah, I can, I can have fun during the recall, um, where appropriate. Cause some of the images might not be appropriate. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll explain what, you know, here's what's going on in this. And, you know, this is in my old house and this guy's, you know, uh, I don't know, dance on this guy's head on my childhood bed, you know, that kind of stuff. People would, would laugh at that. Mm. Um, yeah, a couple of times where I've done, I've done the, I've recalled the entire decks like while it's clicking on the cards. I'm like, hey, this this guy's doing this. Uh, it blew some people away. They're like, wow, you're for the amount of information I'm doing in such a short amount of time. My stories were so clear, um, which is cool because I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize it was. That's just how I memorize. And sometimes I, I add the story after. I'll, I'm, I'm putting these images in, in places so fast, but then um, when I'm when I come back to them later and I, I review them, it's like I come up, come with this come up with the story later because like in a longer event i review i review the cards more than once right um yeah. that makes sense so anyway getting on, i feel like i'm getting on a tangent now but oh no um, it was, uh, yeah i got lots of questions but yeah that, that is that is part of the plan i will i mean I'll, i'm hopefully going to find one or two people that maybe want to jump in and commentate a little because i might be pretty focused like especially during the memorization i'm probably not, not going to talk a lot i'll probably be probably take some pee breaks and some drink breaks and some you know have a sandwich or something, but right, right. Um, I'll be pretty focused. I mean, yeah, during recall, hopefully I can relax a little bit, but I mean, even the recall is going to take, I don't know, six or seven or eight hours. Like it's going right. to be, it's going to be a slog, man. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll do my best to make it an, an entertaining though. And if there um, are commentators, are you going to have their, their, their sound or no? I don't know. I don't think I want to. Cause I don't imagine, know. I don't know. I imagine think, you get a bunch I of, I gotta think about it. You get a bunch of nemesis in there, and they're like, "Here comes the Queen of Hearts." That's my bone from Space Odyssey 2001. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> then you're like, "Oh, <laughs> that would be an interesting event." Yeah. Right? Is um, you you memorize the deck of cards, and then you have people who actually have the systems sit there, and as you're yeah. assembling the deck, they're shouting at you their images for the cards as you're putting them out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'd be we'll... hilarious. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> as, as long as long as I couldn't hear it, I think that would be good because that would probably throw me right off. Right, right. No, but that's what I mean. Yeah. As like a challenge, uh, not for this, but <laughs> like a future event would be, you know, nemonist obstruction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's hilarious. I like it. All right. <laughs> just just as an idea. I mean, and then it would even be more confusing if you shared the same underlying system. So you know, someone who's doing yeah. it. So, so to speak, traditional major based, as opposed to you know some other uh, way of doing it, mm-hmm. Dominic or etc. Uh, right. <laughs> you you could uh, you you would hear the sounds that would be so similar uh, that would yeah kind of potentially I don't know anyway. Um, obstruction is always an interesting thing and in how to add it on. Um, I think I've I've heard uh, at certain competitions they've done s- stuff like that um, having a piano banged or something like that. Um, really? I recall. I don't know. It's in the mists of my memory. I, I, I feel like okay. I recall somebody telling me something about that at one point, but um, it might be a different thing. Uh, <laughs> I can't see them doing that at, a, at an actual like traditional memory, memory sports mm. event. Um, just because like, especially if like the breaking is turned ball and stuff like that, but right. I could definitely see like some sort of, a, I wouldn't be shocked if that's happened in like a more experimental setting. That'd be, I'd be interested in trying that out. That'd be fun. I'm probably fusing conversations with Nelson and uh, John Graham because, you know, John yeah. Graham talks about obstructions in the episode we did with him and like purposely listening to music or whatever, when you're practicing. Um, yeah. Which I, which I remember him talking. Him. Yeah. I remember him saying, um, that was actually the first episode of your podcast. That's how I discovered your podcast. He oh, said okay. he was on here. Yeah. Right. And I remember him, I was in the gym listening to it 
Um, and I remember him talking about how he'll he'll do stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, before like, because uh, he set he. I remember he he competed in the world memory championships. He did. He set almost a world record in five minute images. He was saying like, oh, before I train uh, that event or whatever event, he'll he'll get on the floor and do like a bunch of push ups, um, right. and then get up and memorize. And yeah. it's like I remember thinking like, that's crazy, but it, like it makes sense because then like in the heat of the moment when your heart's racing and all that, then you're kind of already done that, right? So yeah, it makes sense to like <laughs> stimulate stimulate the, or or make it harder. So that way, if you're in an event, it's easier. You're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't do 50 pushups before this. This will, you know, maybe it'll be easier. Um, yeah, I thought that was fascinating. Um, yeah. I haven't incorporated that into my own training yet, but <laughs> actors do a lot of that stuff, you know, before they perform. So yeah. I mean, I'll never forget seeing Liv Schreiber and Jeff Goldblum on the set. I, I've done quite a bit of work on uh, movie sets, etc., over the years, and seeing those two guys, you know, they both had their different ways of warming up before the heat is yeah. on, before action goes. And I never forget Jeff Goldblum beside Liv Schreiber going jump, 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 jump up and down, up and down, up and down, and then they're like action, and he just stops, and then they walk forward, <laughs> and he's he, but he's then he's just so vibrant and alive, and is you know he's got the energy that he needed. Yeah, um, interesting stuff. Okay, so let's yeah. get nerdy about some some things yes, that in my mind. So, you know, you, you're going so fast that you have to invent the story later, and then people are surprised. And we know that there's a lot of people who they want to do this, but they just don't get it. They don't get what it yeah. is that you're doing in the first place. And so what is it that you're doing <laughs> in the first place uh, oh, okay. as you practice, as you, yeah, okay. you know, implement the practice, so to speak? Sure. So I, I won't get into like um, the crazy uh, details of, of my actual system. It's been talked about before. I think I talked, I touched on it a little bit last time. It's the same system Alex Mullen uses complicated two card system. Um, yeah. But what I'm, what I'm doing is, yeah, memorizing each. Uh, so each pair of cards. Uh, so I, I have a unique image for every possible pair of two cards. So, um, and then what I'm doing is I'm placing those images in a journey, a memory palace, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and then, and then during recall, yeah, I just walk through the palace and I pull my images. Basically that's, and you know, the images interact with each other. Um, now some people place a certain amount of images per location, right? Like they, they have their own preference. The system I use, um, I have to actually be okay with different numbers of like it. I don't know how nerdy you want to get, but, um, yeah, I it, mean, so when you're talking about having, it varies, but it per right. location is what I'm saying. So, for yeah. example, I if I'm doing cards, yeah. what I tend to like to do is start up yeah. here, and then I'll go maybe three to five cards, sometimes a bit more. It depends on yeah. on the cards, because if I can slip in another one in the logic of how the images are working, I might do yeah. so. And then I'll go here. So when you're talking about placing your your, you know, you have to do a certain thing a certain way. I think people will get that. Sure. Okay. What, yeah. What do you okay. have so to like, do in a certain way? Right. So what you're saying is more of a preface thing, which is cool. Cause like you, you look at the next card and, Oh, this actually works really good in the previous story. Like it's a right. perfect way to end it or if it's good. So like, in, which I, which I totally get. And in um, in this case, so I have a unique image for every pair of two cards, but every unique image. So I, our system only uses 1360 images, right. Mm-hmm. Instead of like 27, what is, what is it supposed to be? 2704 or whatever. So 52 times 52, it's right, right. half that because what we do um, is every image. So, okay. How do I, I always try to think of the easiest way to explain it. Every image has two card pairs associated to it. One starts with the black card and then there's a corresponding uh, pair that starts with a red card. Right. So um, if it starts with a black card, then I keep highlighting images in that location. And then as soon as I get a pair of cards that begins with a red, so I, I read my cards left to right. So if I get uh a pair of cards that has a red card first, then that's the last image in that location. Mm-hmm. And then I move to the next location. And then I, awesome. if it's, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And then, and then if the next, the next image, if it's a red card first, right away, a red pair, uh, that's the only image in that location. And then I move to the next one. So it's always the last image in a location is always a red first pair. Um, so if the same image comes up twice in a deck, which actually happens more than you think um, to tell the difference, uh, I go, well, which is which? Well, you know, one of them was the first image in a, in a location, which means it was black first. The other was by itself, or it was the final image in, you know, in a location, which means it would be a red first. So the red, 
using the red first pairs. So if it starts with a diamond or a heart, um, it's like a it's like a built-in stop sign. That's how Alex Mullins explained it. Um, okay. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, it's red first. This is the final image here. Kind of quickly uh, end the story and then next location or end now, the image or whatever's happening. Yeah. My question yeah. is, you're having this effect of cards appearing multiple times within a deck because you're using software, not actual um, decks. No. Okay. So if I'm, no, no, I'm sorry, not multiple cards, but the same image because each image has two possible card pairs. Right. Right. Um, and a, a unique oh, image could show up twice in one deck. And uh, this actually happened when last week when I was doing, um, I tried to memorize 40 decks of cards and I was this close. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, um, this exact thing happened to me and screwed me up. And um, I had, back to back the exact same image and the strategy I use for how many, again, I don't want to get too caught in the weeds, but the strategy I use to keep track of this stuff, it was, it's, if you could imagine a, a worst case scenario for two images popping up, like you, you memorize enough decks, you're going to see this eventually. And it happened. And, and I didn't catch it. And um, anyway, so I memorized 39 out of 40 decks and two, it was two hour memorization and recall took a little over two hours. So I still, basically did 40 decks i just i i flipped two pairs of cards so right. anyway um, okay i'm not even sure that i actually so do happens. understand this let me think here so okay. you, the way i understand what alex is yeah. doing is if you had uh let's say six of clubs and then you had ace of hearts that's going to be one image and then ace of hearts and six of clubs is going to be another image but are you saying that six of clubs or and ace of hearts and ace of hearts and six of clubs are one image and you're just placing it based um, on whether the red comes first or the black comes yeah, first basically now that, ah, that okay. specific card combination isn't that that those are diff those are completely different images they are but okay. um but the color so, is dictating something about the stopping the point. color so yeah when you say so so did you say it was an ace of spades six of hearts is what you said I, I think i said uh six of clubs ace of hearts but i'm i don't okay. i wasn't tracking so, what i said <laughs> six of, okay let's just go with that so six of clubs ace of a lot of people think that They're like oh yeah the system works it's called the shadow system right the right. system we use yeah. they'll say oh the six of clubs and ace of hearts is the same as the ace of hearts and six of clubs well, that's not actually true it's six of clubs ace of hearts six of hearts ace of clubs right. because there's got to be a red first and a black first so right. The, the the number cards the number the value of the card has to stay the same it's the suit that changes because the suit is what um makes the first sound of the because it's all major system based based on a three digit a major system okay. which now we've i'm sure you've talked about the major system multiple times hopefully we don't have to explain yeah 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 but that. just maybe yeah what is your six of clubs ace of hearts uh and what is your ace of hearts uh, six of clubs it spells it spells the word legit so i think of mc hammer right okay yeah too legit to quit yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I have leash for uh, six of clubs, right? Um, like a dog leash. And usually I have the dog that is, you know, with the leash. And then what did I say? Ace of hearts. Uh, that would be fan, um, which is like both a fan, literally a fan and the fan, the movie. Yeah. So I'm essentially having two two of my 0099 PAO. But if you're using legit, like too legit to quit, right? Yeah. Where, where the three numbers are applying to two cards. Yes. Okay. So then that card is then what your your uh your your 561? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So the two combination yeah, very good. So the two combination <laughs> is a 5 yeah. L Right, and then, uh, and then the six is a you know the j uh, soft G, yeah. and then the ace the ace we use as a one or a T. So, yeah. okay. So, my understanding is better now. I, I don't think it was that far off in the beginning, but I I understand it a, a, a fair amount better oh. now. Um, do you know the origin of why they are calling it the shadow? I do actually. Uh, uh, what is we it? Got a little history lesson here. Okay, so this post showed up. But so Lance Sherhart's the guy that made the system. Yep. Uh, awesome guy and very smart, very intelligent guy. He put a lot of thought into this and he, he has posted updates since he's tweaked it a little. I still use like the original version of it and it does pretty good for me, I think. So 
Um, so it was originally called the shadow system. So, th- so he posted on the art of memory form back in 2014. Right. And, um, this is the post me and like Alex Mullen and John Graham and a few other guys. It, it's, it's a complicated post, but it's like, I think I had to read it 20 or 30 times before it made sense. <laughs> but then once it clicked, cause I had people just keep saying, keep reading it. You, the shadow system's worth it. You know, you gotta understand anyway. So it clicked and originally it was called the shadow system because, um, we didn't have that, um, the two blocks, the two block system that's part of it. So like when I, when I have uh, one image for two pairs of cards, that mm-hmm. wasn't part of it originally. What Lance did was he designed all of the card pairs. Um, I th- I don't know if it was all the black first ones or red. First, I don't quite know. So he had the corresponding colors lined up still. Um, but what he did was he did um, all his original 13, it's 1352, I think 1352 images for the card system. And then he did another 1352, um, not using the same phonetics though. They were um, what he called shadow images. So they were just opposites of everything. So that I way see. he didn't have to, so that way he wouldn't confuse, because uh, it's either your options are what? Like come up with brand new phonetics for another 1352 images, which is, it's already hard to do for the first set, right? right. Uh, other option is you create another set of images that are identical, exact same phonetics. And then you'd have to know, which is that could get confusing. Uh, and then his option was, I, I guess the, the, the grand solution was doing what we do now is just using one image for two pairs of cards is coming up with a way to know which is which, which we have. But right. that option, I don't think he knew, maybe didn't know of at the time. So he created uh, shadow images for like, so for the image he used that spelled ketchup, um, which should which be, would be either double club or double diamond. So that's the K, uh, seven, right. uh, and then a six and a nine uh, for on each card. Um, the shadow version of that card would be mustard and it didn't spell mustard or anything, right, but right. he would know because it's you based on the suit combination. Oh, that's the shadow version of the image ketchup. So I know it's mustard. So, um, he had shadows originally for all the images. Right. Um, and then I, I think, and I could be getting my history wrong, but I think Alex was the one who took this and then Johannes Milo, uh, who I mentioned earlier, he had his own, his own two card system, which he still uses. And I think he was kind of the first guy that, that did what we do, where he had, he's, he's like, well, he just decided, I'm just going to do half the work and then, you know, uh, have, have one image for two pairs of cards and have a way to do it. So he took that idea from Johannes, applied it to Lance's system, still calls the shadow system, even though the name doesn't really apply anymore because right. there's no shadow. In it. But the name sounds cool. And um, it kind of just stuck. And everybody know it's been seven years since that original post. And everyone kind of just knows what you mean when you say it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's why they call it the shadow system. I was just curious if it had anything to do with on the shadows of the ideas by yield Giordano Bruno. Um, <laughs> incidentally, an announcement. I have permission to read this translation live on a stream and that's cool. uh, potentially, you know, maybe on a dedicated one, but I'm, I'm not sure when, um, but anyway, I don't want to sidetrack us, but I just, uh, was curious if it had any influence from, from that book. Um, no. Because shadow means something a little bit different there, but it relates. Um, definitely. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, so cool. That's it. So yeah. I know that some people are going to listen to that and they're going to be like, uh, and so forth. Yeah. Where would, where would you say is the, the more entry level way to, to go if you just want to get started? Or would you advise somebody? No, just buckle down. This is where it's at. This is the the new you know thing for speed memorization of cards, so you might as well right. go this way first. Do you have an opinion about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I do. So like, I've had some people, some and there have been people who just they've you know they follow memory up you know for a bit. They're like, yeah, I need, I want to get this, but I want to do it right. I'm just going to start big, do a three digit system. So you know, a unique, unique image from zero 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 to nine nine nine, um, two card system. Like they go, they go, you know, all in and. Good for them. I, I don't think it's a good idea. I started with a two-digit PAO system, person, action, object, right? So I had a unique person, action, and object for each single card and each image from zero, zero to nine, nine. Um, very basic. And that's what I originally used for you know a few years. Um, and I would recommend, I mean, you don't have to do PAO. You can just do like a single image for each card or two-digit number. I would suggest you build a basic system first and you can find uh, tools for this. Like on artofmemory.com, there's tons of links uh, to be able to, to to figure this out using 
you know, Dominic system, um, major system, all sorts of different ways or PAO. PAO is great. Yeah. And um, do build a basic system, get used to memorizing first. Like had I not had, you know, the years of experience, just like learning to memorize and using palaces and do that. I don't think I would have um, been as good at what I do now. Like I had, you know, basically all I did was, you know, develop a bigger system, but once I, and it took probably over a year to get, by the time I started both my card and my number system, and then was back to where I was with my old system, you're looking at uh, well over a year, year and a half, even quite, quite, quite a while um, before I was like really probably a year, I'd say, sorry. I know what I'm thinking about it. I'm getting on my mind because that's where my daughter was born when I started it. So it's a little easier on, the, mm-hmm. on my times. But yeah, it's like, it was a lot of work to get, to get even close and um, worth it for me. But I think you're better off learning first. And then if you decide, you know what, I want to get a little more serious. I want to build a bigger system. Uh, awesome. Thing is, like, you, you can build that at your own pace while you still um, use your smaller system, right? You can still, that's what, and that's what a lot of other people do too, is uh, they'll, they'll use their basic system. And, you know, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you can take as long as you want to build a bigger one if that's something you want to do. And there's nothing wrong with using just a basic system if that's what you want to do as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, a lot of like uh, higher ranked, um, like the best in Mongolia and China and stuff, most of them use a basic two digit system, a uh, one card system, um, whether it's just, you know, single imager or, or PAO. Um, a lot of them use basic stuff and they set world records and they, they crush everybody. You don't have to have a big system. In my opinion, it helps. I don't think I'd be where I am without them, but this, that, that's what worked for me, right? So, um, I suggest building a small one and just learning about the method of low guy. Right. 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 Figuring that, figuring out those baby steps first. Cause um, yeah. And having that in place too is good. Cause like it made me appreciate um, where I am now. Uh, yeah. So, and build your own system. Like don't, don't take somebody else's because like what someone's images mean to them aren't what they mean to you, you know? So like if I just, I've had people ask me for my list of images and like, I don't normally give it, like I've had a couple, couple close friends I trust where I let them look at it just because they needed ideas. Um, but I don't normally let give it out because, um, you know, all these images I have, like, you know, half of them are characters from the office or, uh, you know, different video game characters and like, mm-hmm. um, you know, heavy metal guys and stuff like, you know, or random objects, things that aren't going to mean anything to people. They had, they don't have the context, the, the history, the memory, that kind of thing. And, um, you know what I mean? So like you want your images to make uh, some sense to you and, you're, and you, know, you want them to mean something to you. So don't, be, what I'm saying is build your own systems. Don't take somebody else's. Right, right. Yeah, put, put well, the work in. Yeah, I think that that's not only necessary, but inevitable. And yeah. besides which, all my values have always been, look, I'm here to teach you to fish, but also how to hunt, how to farm, how to build a factory if you want to, because fish every day is boring, right? And, and it's just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, and if you don't build this stuff for your own, you know, you're never going to really, you know, you're never going to get even a plateau, let alone transcending your own plateau. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's just, yeah. Uh, it's interesting though, when I was uh, talking with Ron White, we went through some of our images and he's like, hey, that's my image too. Uh, I think it was, uh, we both have James T. Kirk for, um the king of clubs or the number that underlies that uh, from, because Jim and James, James and Jim and so forth. And he was like, All right, where'd you get that? <laughs> and I, I said, Oh, well, you know, it's just logical. Oh, right. right. And um, awesome. if you really wanted to, the old Bruno first program has the number dictionary in the end, and it's got many, many possible permutations, but it's still not going to get you there because it's just, you yeah. know, possible suggestions. And uh exactly. As you say, and we know this from memory science, by the way. Um, so what's called active recall requires personalization uh, and variety. So you have, you're already advantaging yourself by giving it personalized uh, signatures or yeah. mnemonics or whatever you want exactly. to call it. Yeah, yeah, well said. So memory palace design, you said, you know, you're not, you're not quite there with that. Well, how do you approach it? What, do, what are your thoughts on, you know? getting it right. So you have minimum effort with maximum output in terms of the Mary palace. Uh, I, well, I find everyone works differently with palaces. 
I've always been kind of lazy um, with creating them. Like for the longest time, I used to say a handful. Um, and then uh, I've been slowly building more and more. Uh, and now, now that I've talked to some people, they're like, oh, you have like this many? I'm like, yeah. And so they get motivated to build more. But like I talked to guys who go to the World Memory Championships. It's like, oh, yeah, I got like 150 because, you know, you, you do an hour cards, hour numbers, 30-minute binary. It's like spoken numbers, which can go a long time if you're really good at it. So you need and multiple, you know, multiple trials of some of these events, not the long ones, but so you need to have uh, a lot of journeys, palaces again, same thing. Right. And uh, so my approach, I'm basically just pulling every palace I have. Um, so I have. I'm at like give or take about 65 now, like 50 of them are palaces I've used a, at least a few times and know. Um, like half, half of those I know intimately and very well, and I can move through them and I'm great with them. And then the other 25, I probably need to practice a little bit. So I'm not too slow on, on the event day, right. but then, yeah, the, there's another, like, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 at least where I feel like I basically come up with the idea of them and walk through them a couple of times, but I should probably use them a few times before the event. Right. So I know, Oh yeah, maybe that location isn't so good. Or, you know, these, you know, you know what I mean? Like uh, when you walk around and, maybe two, two places are too close to each other or whatever. Like some people, when they go, when they use a memory palace, they can, they can find, they walk into a living room and they can place like 20, they can make 20 locations in there. Right. They, you know, okay. I got the top of my dresser, my TV, this and that, and my table, the top of the chair, the bottom of the chair. And they, they dance around and like, I don't get it. When most memory palaces, I walk into a room, I use the room. Maybe like I look at, one end of the room, the other end of the room, and I'm done. Like I, I can't use a, a space too much. Like some places, I use just one per room. Sometimes right. it's two or three, but I, I've always been the type where like I need big, I need big places, uh, big spaces, and like I can't put too many locations in them. I get it just doesn't work for me. So um, again, some people might have like with what I'm doing, just create like super super long journeys, like crazy, uh, and I. Again, that doesn't work for me, especially with the method I use. Like, because like with you, if you if you're like, okay, I'm gonna place three cards per location, and you can like calculate exactly how many locations you're gonna need. Uh, mine varies, so okay. um, right. So like, if I go through a deck of cards, I might on one deck of cards, I might not, I might only need twelve locations. On another one, I might need twenty or twenty one. Right. Um, so I basically have to have a palace for each deck, and I have maybe five or six palaces where they're big enough that I can comfortably where I know I'm not going to run out of room. I can comfortably, comfortably fit like two. Um, so I'll be using those for that. But, um, uh, and then usually if I'm, I skip a location. So like if I'm in, in one, one big palace, and then after that happens, I usually imagine like lightning striking and fire and stuff in the, in the lo like I, I, I almost create like a barrier. Right. And then I start like a new deck in the, in the following location. So I skip a location, make it look all, exciting and uh you know end of daisy and stuff and judgmental and and then i go to and then i go to the next location and then i'm like okay this is the new deck now and then i know car to get in yeah so but yeah my approach is basically and i don't know if this sounds like if, if this is the way you'd approach it but because of the system i use i again i can't exactly map out everything i'm going to do um like in the way of how many locations I need. So I'm basically with the exception of a few palaces doing all individual palaces. So the fun part there is once I, once I figure out these last few um, and a lot of them are just like places I've lived, worked. Um, I use a bunch from some video games too, actually. So those are good. Um, you know, places I've, you know, levels of video games like golden eye and um, super like Mario 64 games right. i played a lot as a wow. kid and even as an adult too and uh I, the levels they're like they're like places i've lived in like i know them very well so like it's not it's not weird to me mm. um i gotta come up with a few more but the thing is i gotta come up the tricky part i gotta memorize the order of my palaces so that's a whole different problem i gotta figure <laughs> out because i can i can nail all 70 decks perfectly and be laughing all the way to the bank and then i hit submit and then i realize um, you know, I mixed the order for a couple of palaces and then there, there goes half my decks, you know, like if I have them in the wrong sequence. So have you experimented yeah. with, uh, alphabetizing them? Uh, I haven't, no, I was, I, I'm open to any suggestions you might have. Um, what I was 
going to do was break them up into groups of seven and, um, and then figure out a logical way to group them together. Um, and even like a logical way that makes sense to go like why this palace would lead into this one and this one, even though like physically they might not be anywhere near each other. I'll create like a dumb little narrative to, to link them together. And, um, I've already kind of been doing that with the events I've been streaming, like the longer, like the hour cards and the two hour cards I did because I got like, I got, I got to memorize 40 decks. Right. So I got to think of right. there. So I've been coming up with funny stories as to like when I'm doing the gold night levels, I just go in order. I'm like, okay, I, I know the dam is the first level of the game. The facility is the second level, the runways the third. So I know the order. So I can go through it that way, but um, alphabetizing is not a bad idea at all. <laughs> the other <laughs> thing, that, the other thing that comes to mind, I mean, I don't know exactly how I would do this, but I would, if I didn't like the alphabet, if it didn't feel right, all I would do to remind myself of the order is I would have the zero zero palace, the zero one palace, the zero two palace, and the zero zero palace is going to be the Dr. Zeus palace. Cause that's my image for zero zero. The zero one is going to be the tragedy mask, sad mask. Cause that's my zero one. The zero two is going to be the sun palace. Right. And so I would just assign them that way. Then it's like no big deal. Where do I go next? Well, I just finished zero two. So I go to zero three. And then by the time I get to, yeah. you know, so, uh, let's say it takes all hundred, right? I get to, or 99 is the hundredth palace in a zero zero to 99 arranging it that yeah. way. I've done that and it, it works real nice um, as an alternative to alphabetizing. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess you can like, if I did it that way, cause I do have a little two digit system all, um, if I need a two, two digits, I have a little two digit system I'll use. And yeah, I could just start like at the beginning of each palace, like add, a, add like a location zero almost to it, like a beginning, like a, add a beginning to it and yeah. put that image there. And then I know, okay, that one's, you know, like my image for zero zero is Zeus from the movie Turbo Kid. He's a villain okay. in it. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but <laughs> I, I, like I, a Canadian, uh, like retro, like eight, love letter to 80s, like action movie. I have the vaguest Amazing. memory of it, but I don't know if I've even seen it. But I used to okay. work at Queen Video, so I've seen like every movie that okay. exists. <laughs> no, well, not every movie. New. It came out a few years ago, and um, oh, sorry, well, I thought you said it was the '80s movie. No, uh, it's like a no. The, oh, it's the a retro like a love letter. Thing. Okay, so to, like the '80s, like action and stuff. And anyway, it's, he's played by. Was it, wasn't there a video game called Turbo Kid? Or uh, isn't that a, there's one coming out? Okay, I don't know if it's out yet, but there there is actually a game coming out based on the movie. Uh, I, soon, I think. I'll look it up later because it sounds it strikes such a bell. Um, okay. Uh, maybe anyway. it's a, maybe it's a character yeah. in a movie at some point, like Gleaming the Cube. That was that's what comes to mind when I think of this, uh, which is an old skateboard movie, or was it a BMX movie, something like this? Um, that's bizarre because Turbo. I don't mean to get off topic, but in Turbo, ah, they're all here. They're, they're they ride this. BMX bikes. I know what I'm getting up here. There's a there's a band that I saw play in Kamloops, British Columbia, once upon a time called Engine Kid. And um, that's probably something that I'm getting in my head. And then Kid Icarus was a, a game. And uh, I think there was like a turbo mode in Kid Icarus, Icarus, or there was some kind of video game with turbo something. Anyway, I'm mixing okay. a bunch of stuff, um, which is, you know, a problem in memory. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> we could sometimes do that. But no, I thought you said it was an 80s film. And then I was starting to think, ah. oh, I can yeah. picture this now. Um, but what I was going to tell you, is it, imagine that you do do a zero zero to 99 memory palace network. Then speaking of shadows, you could have the shadow version of that, right? So you have the positive and then you have the negative and you, yes, could, you could experiment yeah. actually just reusing it. Now, I don't know if that would actually work in, in a goal like that. Cause the, the possibility for confusion and blurring is pretty high. Um, but you can, you can think of other ways to reduplicate it. Cause one thing that I haven't done yet, but I'm thinking of that might, strike a chord with you is uh why not have multiple zero zero to 99s based on things like male female or even non-binary uh you know or whatever uh, kinds of assignments that you want to do uh just different yeah. versions so you could have you know whatever i use i use thomas mm -hmm. as but i could think of uh, what was her name? Sue Johansson, like Susan. She used to do the Canadian show. I don't know if you remember it when you were a kid, but when I was a teenager, I always used to listen to the Sunday night sex show on CBC with Sue Johansson. So oh, Susan could yeah. be the female. Pleasure person. guest. You remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid, but I remember, I remember, you know, flicking through and laughed in like a immature little. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love that show. Um, 
anyway, like, just as an example, now I don't know what my my female zero one would be, but it's just kind of like an interesting way of reduplicating yeah. uh, the core system and just changing it to a different version uh, of itself, essentially. That's cool. Um, I mean, or if nothing else, like it'd be good for variety too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you don't get bored of your images because that's what I complain about people with a two digit or, or a one card system is that um, they get bored. They get bored of their images. So like, or or if you want to compete in these longer events, the World Memory Championships, you know, I mean, a single card system is good for speed cards or even 10 minute cards. But when you're memorizing cards for an hour and you're seeing the same images over and over and over again, right. um, it can get tiresome. Which is why I love having a two card just because like I'll I'll memorize cards for hours and there could be a few images I still don't ever see that don't come up, right? Right. Um but in, my, in your case, so yeah, if you're using a two digit system, like maybe it'd be good even just to switch things up to have like a shadow or even two shadows for each each thing just to for variety or I don't know. But right, right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, those are the two ideas that come to yeah. mind as ways to just organize where you are that are kind of they, yeah. they, it might not play out as easy in reality as in my imagination, but you know, this is one of the principles I use with memorizing foreign language vocabulary is, you know, I don't have to remember what comes next because it's an A word in an A palace. So that reduces a certain level. I don't have to think, well, you know, it's got to start with an A. So that's already a trigger. Um, so that's part of the, yeah. the logic behind that. Uh, Ron told me, by the way, that when he considered doing his um, Afghanistan memory wall project, that he had considered doing it alphabetically because precisely that oh. reason, if he's doing all the A names, then, you know, it's just like a no brainer. I'm in the A sequence until I'm done the A sequence. Uh, but as I understand it, he he changed it to chronological order. Um, oh, okay. Uh, in any case, there's there's probably other many, many uh, possible yeah. ways to organize them. Um, no ways to do it. Yeah. Cool. So you know, when you when you're mentioning the gender too, um, like as a shadow, I was thinking too. One thing I use, one strategy I use for names is like I, I kind of gender names too. So like, if I see the name Paul, I always think of a ball because it rhymes. Right. So I see the name Paula, I think the same thing because I, I just imagine it is like a female version of that name. So I kind of uh, by doing that, or like if I had an image for a female name and not a male one, I realized oh, those are pretty similar. I'll just make this name a male version of this name. Like, uh, right. like uh, I don't know, Kendra and Ken or something like that. Right, right. Um, yeah, you know, and then and then I'll do stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you can do you can get really creative with, um, with I don't know. Anyway, that was just a funny thought I had, but that's something I, I do that I I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, and it's like a nice little like nice little cheat just to, yeah, you know, work work a little less hard, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, yeah. I often, you mentioned creative just now, and I often tell people, no, no, don't be creative. Just use what is already created, you know, like <laughs> Ken, Ken dolls are already created. So you get a Kendra, why reinvent the wheel? I mean, if you have to get the draw thing, then, you know, use a Hydra or something. Ken has all of a sudden had his head cut off and it's growing back with two heads because he's the Kendra, you know, the Hydra Kendra, right, right. <laughs> something like that. Right. But in neither of those cases, am I inventing or creating anything, just selecting from the existing pool of images. I don't know, what do you think about that? Like, are you, do you have things that you've just, you would call that you've created or are you also just selecting from the field that already exists? Um, it depends, like if I'm if I'm doing memorizing names, like I have a bunch, like common names, I, I have a bunch basically that I just use all the time. And it's like, whenever I see the name James, I think of, uh, and some of these I've actually taken from Ron White. Um, I think of chains and every time, cause it's a common right. name, but then sometimes I'll see, I'll see a name and I'll just call an audible and I'll be like, based on what they look like, or I have an idea I've never had about a name in the moment. Uh, and I'll just imagine that image on them instead on their face or ears or whatever. And sometimes I, yeah, I'll do it in the moment. Um, if it's a common name, I see a lot. Right. I just pull, it's almost like I'm pulling from my, uh, you know, I can do it blindfolded. Like I'm, I, I, I have the same thing every time. I, I spend a quarter of a second and I, and I got it. But yeah, sometimes I see some wild names, some weird ones, or I, again, a common one where like uh, I, I can't think of an example right now. But I had one recently where, yeah, it was like an image I never occurred to me, and I was like, oh, I never thought of this. I you see this, you know, and it was really cool. But it'd be cool if I could think of what it was though. But <laughs> well, let's talk about that because yeah, <laughs> I had the funniest thing with Ron yesterday. I was getting super tired. 
but uh, he uh, he he mentioned that he'd seen my TEDx or you know seen some video related to my TEDx, yeah. and then I couldn't even remember the name of my damn talk. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's called. And then you know it was just the weirdest thing. I remembered the talk, I gave the talk, but then I couldn't say you know whatever it's called. Too easily remembered questions that silence negative thoughts or whatever. But part of the reason why is that I've never actually memorized the damn name of the talk because they didn't ask me to name it until after the fact. You know, it was like six months later, they said, Hey, what should we call this? <laughs> and so I never, ever memorized it. But this is like the weird thing that yeah. people, you know, all, always think is like, we're all on all the time. And, um, you know, it's just not true. Right. Uh, and no. in, in some sense, part of what we're doing is switching the power on at, you know, particular circumstances, but I, uh, I, I'll never forget when I went back to Germany after I had my little, little mini competition or whatever you want to call it with Dave Farrow. And, uh, the, my friends asked me, you know, how did you do? And I said, well, technically I came in second cause it was me and him and he won. <laughs> and then they said, what do you mean? Go back, go beat him or whatever. You come only come home when you're number one. And I said, no, no, I'm like, it just spontaneously came out of me. I was like, I'm like the flash man. You know, like I can, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can do pretty good. I can get what needs to be done well enough, but don't ask me to remember you know dates with my <laughs> girlfriend or anything like this <laughs> i know i know that's the thing but a lot of people expect you to be on all the time right and um, yeah. it's, not, it's not the case and i did okay so i thought of an example uh just now uh of what i said it's not with names i was with with numbers so with the with the image with uh, the 697 and the major system i always used to think of uh chupacabra right. which is like an old you know monster and that's the thing is like i remember the show supernatural one of the early episodes they hunt a chupacabra and it's like really bad mid 2000s CGI. And you do Google image search and there's either bad horror movies that have had chupacabras or like there's just drawings. So there's not a, but I just imagine this weird creature every time and this, I did this for like two or three years. And then in the middle of memorizing, I got six, this is like a few months ago in the middle of like a memory league uh, training session, I get six, nine, seven. And I, without thinking, I memorized the word Chewbacca. I'm like, what have I been doing this whole time? Like that, I, I don't know. The, it never occurred to me that it also sounds like Chewbacca. I'm like, duh. Like what? So in the moment, I I made that change and I like, memorized him, and then I never forget that one anymore. But um, right, right. Yeah, it was so funny. It was like just just dawned on me, and I was like, wait, what have I been doing this whole time? What a waste. So yeah, that that is an example. Yeah, but I, I know what you're saying. Like we're not always on, and uh, you know, people will ask like with with these memory things, like do they you know, if I have bad working memory, like, you know, teaching me to memorize these awesome things is good for school or work. But I say, well, you know, there might be some transfer and all that, but this, at the end of the day, like you gotta be paying attention to what you're doing. And like, for me, yeah, if I'm not actively encoding, like we don't actively encode every second of every day, right. That's not realistic. Um, mm -hmm. What we can do is, you know, pay attention to what we're doing, uh, which is a key part of just remembering things in general. Um, and you know, things we do need to memorize, then, make, you know, make, making the effort or maybe writing it down and then coming back to it later and figuring out a way you can remember it if it's important. But right. I mean, having these tools is good too. Cause like if, if you're um, like now in Nelson's book, remember, he's got a ton of good tips of like, if you're on the street and you don't have your phone's dead, you don't have anything to write with, um, you need someone's phone number, right? Or you, you need, you're getting someone's giving you directions. He has all these tips on how to memorize that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, you, you can get tools to memorize things in the moment if you need it. Right. But um, I, I don't know how many times I find myself with it, you know, in that, that situation, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's interesting and it's nice to just take a break sometimes, you know, <laughs> Yeah. but um, I wasn't taking a break. I think you said six, nine, seven. Right. And um, yeah. so I don't even know what Chubacabra is, but I think you said something like that. And then Chewbacca. Now, when I give examples like that, what people who know the major say to me instantly, because I used um, uh, the Japanese flag in Oliver Sacks, and I just used my zero seven, but I mentally cut out the zero, right? And so with like yeah. Chupacabra, people would be like, well, why isn't there a four in there? Because you've got an R, right? Right. And so yeah. how do you, how do you deal with that? Like I just said, I just throw away the zero, but, but I've got a zero in there. How do you, um, you know, make sure that you know that it's because you codify that and you're always going to use that or you just remember. Yeah. Um, um, for most of my images, like a lot of people are very militant about, it's gotta be three syllable word, like end of story. 
um, because it's, you know, it's a system and they, it, their brains work that way. Right. Um, coming up with a thousand images is hard. So, um, yeah, I, a lot of the words will have four or five syllables, but as long as it's, and I, I do have exceptions, but most of the time it's, I take the first three syllables of a word. So like chew, puck, cut, that's it. So six, nine, seven. And then, yeah, the, there's still another B and an R at the end of that. So there should be a nine and a four, right. but I just ignore them. Um, like nine nine seven for me is popcorn. It's like pop, and then you know. So if I'm reading it, it's yeah, it doesn't spell popcorn, but I fill in the blanks and I just know. <laughs> right. I, and you, you rehearse your images enough that you start reading it and it, it comes back to me. And eventually, nine nine seven just looks like popcorn. Like I've looked at it so many times. And, right. And it, um, yeah, I have a few where it doesn't exactly spell, um, like where that involves sixes and eights, which are kind of the harder sounds to do. Um, but I've had to basically just memorize like which is which, like three six eight. I'm probably getting like. I apologize, to some of the listeners that find this really boring. But, no, um, no, this is the <laughs> this is the. I should change this to the deep in the weeds of mnemonic show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so three six eight. I use the word mischief, but like there's no s, there's no zero. Like so, I just you know I pumped it out of there. It's gone, and uh, it's like mischief or like two nine two or. 392 i memorize uh is mr bean right. but it's like m m b so m is short for mr and then bean 92 so i make like little concessions and little cheats like that because yeah. some of the combinations are so brutal and like, there's no realistic word or phrase that comes out of any of them so like yeah you, you gotta make you gotta come up with cheats so i i've i've come up with a bunch um, a bunch of weird ones and eventually, you know, you, you do enough flashcards and memorizing. Right. Yeah. You don't even notice it. So, but it, for some people that doesn't work, some people it's gotta be strict. It's gotta be, you know, the same thing, three syllables. Uh, and that's fine, but yeah. I, that wasn't working for me because man, there's some words that just don't make sense. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. I mean, my favorite example that I use is Viper for 89 right now 89 doesn't have a four on it and i don't even see a viper i see cobra commander and cobra commander (laughs) is a cobra not a viper but anyway it just works (laughs) so i know exactly what you're talking about i have a bunch of images like that (laughs) right right. (laughs) um actually back to this like alternative competition thing maybe a zero zero to 99 is part of the test right so yeah uh, rather than having people uh, memorize a bunch of digits, we could just flash test them. Like what's your 25 and uh, you know, how fast that they respond, uh, you know, with nail or whatever. Um, yeah. Or Neil Ferguson, which I use, uh, I use him with a nail sometimes, whatever, um, you know, like yeah. we, we could rather, uh, that's part of my thing is, you know, how could we make it a faster competition and a little bit more direct and um, have more people included with that benefit of, okay, so these people have developed a zero, zero to 99. We don't need to, we should have it applied to like 20 digits or whatever, but, um, yeah. but also part of the competition would be, okay, now we're going to go through and you're going to name 15 of your zero zero to 99 PAO or whatever you call it. Uh, and, yeah. um, which is a machine says, okay, 75, uh, whatever. I, that's another idea yeah. I had had for that. Um, at some yeah, that's point. Cool. You'd have to have everybody like submit their system, I guess, first. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Otherwise, they just make it up. <laughs> well, it'd be the same thing with the foreign language words, right? Like, I don't have a problem with them submitting it beforehand, but if they, it, I would ask them only to disclose if they had already knowledge of another language. And then yeah. instead of their 250 words or their 600 words or whatever they submit, we just go with a whole dictionary. Um, and because there are other categories, their points would never, um, even if they were cheating, they they would never get enough points in any one category to to eventually be the winner, yeah. or even in the top three. The way I want to design it, um, so but it, it yeah. still is just a demonstration. Like, yeah, you could you know that many words in another language. Great. Now, can you use them in a sentence? <laughs> so that's sort of thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, back to memory palaces. Do you write horizontally? Do you write vertically? Do you write horizontally do you do all of those things or like does it need to what be- do you mean do i write well okay so i think of it as writing uh or sometimes i think of it as weaving into space the placement okay. of images and that's another oh. uh yeah. you know like is it on stations or is it on locations or is it beside them or is it you know hovering above them or how do you how do you experience this um i guess it varies right like um 
it depends where like which palace it is and what's there. Um, in in some cases, like so, if I'm if I'm in a garage, um, sometimes the image will be mem memorable enough. But sometimes, if it's like if it doesn't make sense, sometimes maybe I'll, I'll add a car in the garage so there's something to interact with more, and that might make it more memorable. I, again, like depending on the card combination, I get sometimes that alone will be, you know, I'm not going to forget this. Like it's too easy to, you know, sometimes it just gels and other ones where it might be kind of weird, but uh, I'll add a little extra something. So to link, to anchor those images to that, to that location. I don't always do that though. Um, but like, I love using some bathrooms because there's always like a toilet and a sink and in and, and some bathrooms, like depending on the way they're laid out, I might put, you know, uh, I might use like, yeah, one end of it, like the toilet and then turn around and use like the sink area. Or if there's a shower, I love using like one end of the bathroom and then the shower is like, or bathtub is two different locations. Uh, but I, yeah, typically like um, I'm flexible. It depends what's in the location. Like sometimes I'll put stuff on, uh, on a counter. Sometimes I'll do it in front of the counter. Sometimes if there's a table, it'll be on the table. Like it, and if, again, it's what may, what makes the images make sense. So like, um, it sucks. I've, I've been doing so many decks of cards, like, these long events sometimes when I'm memorizing, I'll uh, something. And this has never happened to me much, but stuff from like a week or two ago when I was doing a different long card because I'm doing all these marathon events now, like preparing, I'll actually remember stuff still from before. Like I'll get ghost images, right. and I'll use that palace in between, like just practicing speed cards, which it's fine. But then when I'm doing long cards, it's like oh, I remember what this what was here two weeks ago. What the heck? Um, <laughs> and in one location, yeah, I had a guy, or a wrestler. With like a big uh, fish hook, like from I know what you did last summer, that where he right. kills all the gets all the teenagers with it, and uh, it made sense in that image for him to like to scrape it on the counter. Uh, whereas like if it was something else, like a gymnast um, doing something, maybe uh, I would have had her up on the counter doing something. Uh, whereas this guy was on the floor. To, so sometimes the what the images are will dictate where they are in the location, if that makes sense too. Yeah. So it's all about like context and developing like a clear uh, narrative for for each location so when i say narrative i mean like a story like yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't always have to it can be as simple as like you know a bowling ball falls and cracks the floor uh awesome but if it's a bunch of images and it's like they're weird ones like so um if i get like a little telegraph machine and then um i had a bunch of and then a hair dryer and then a toothbrush it's like what the heck so like I'll have it might take an extra second to think of something, but uh, I might think of like the telegraph machine, like communicating to the hair dryer that it needs to uh, dry the toothbrush because the toothbrush is wet, you know. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll imagine them in the you know in the sink, like drying off because uh, it got wet in the sink. I don't know something like that. Uh, right. So sometimes it takes a little extra work, but um, yeah, it, I'm pretty flexible, and I think that's important to be to be flexible. A lot of people again are very structured, and that's okay. And I'm pretty structured in that like. Um, I like my, so I, I am structured in my locations or my palaces are set. Some people are just, uh, I don't know. They're, they love the freedom of just like, they, they have an area they use like a, a walk to work or to school and they'll do that journey. And they're like, Oh yeah, I'll put something here this time. I'll put something over there this time. I can't do, I don't do that. I get too confused. So for me, I am structured in that. I got to have the same path every time. That's non-negotiable for me, but within each location, I'll get a little, I'll get a little risky, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, but yeah, it does. It does. Uh, yeah. so you mentioned, you know, I know what you did last summer and the, the hook. One yeah. thing I see quite a bit is people say, I don't want my mind filled with negative imagery and you know, ha have you thought about that? No, I, I, <laughs> no? <laughs> I, I haven't thought about that. I mean, as a, as a guy who, who I enjoy like extreme forms of a lot of things. So like I'm a big, heavy turbo guy. A lot of, <laughs> yeah, turbo kid. There's tons of gore in that movie. I, I love, I love horror movies. Um, uh, not, not, you know, I, I, I like more low budget stuff and indie stuff and, you know, the classics, mm -hmm. um, you know, well, you're Canadian. Like you gotta love Cronenberg, right? Oh, dude, yeah. He's <laughs> okay. We can we can go on a tangent real quick. His son, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. <laughs> have you seen Possessor? His yeah, first... yes, yes. <laughs> this is this that is like movie. this is exactly what you would want Cronenberg's son to be doing. <laughs> dude, 
you could have not told me who directed that, I, I would have been like, did David, did, did a Cronenberg direct this? Like, well, I it, thought, it, hey, it, did you have a child with David Lynch? Lynch? This is amazing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it had all, all the body horror that, that uh, David Cronenberg would have had. And, um, but I've never seen him do anything that psychological. Um, that was like a clinic in psychological horror, that movie, Possessor. Can't, can't preach that enough. If, if you have any horror parental advisor to parental advisory yes. uh and yes. um not it's 18 the, a's basically it's just because of gore i think <laughs> well it's gore but i mean gore on yeah. its own and this is cronenberg's majesty right is that yeah. it's never gore on its own it's actually yeah. causing you to realize that you are a meat tube and yeah. you know like if you remember i think it shivers in the background there's a a poster and it says something like, sex is the clever invention of a venereal disease, right? <laughs> and Cronenberg's always constantly reminding you that you yeah. yourself are the disease, right? It's not yeah. so much that, you know, diseases inhabit you, but rather you are the inhabitor of the thing that perceives yourself as not being the disease that can become diseased but you are actually the disease, right? And you're strapped to the meat tube. You are the witness. That's what video drama is all about is being the, yeah, the witness, yeah. right? You know, go all the way through, Max. <laughs> go all the way through. And <laughs> ends up watching himself, you know, go all the way through because that's what we do. We watch ourselves go all the way through the meat tube grinder of life. Yeah, that's a good description of what body horror is. Yeah, um, yeah. Well said. Yeah, it's not all as zen as, as Cronenberg makes it, but uh, no. in any case, I have a lot of Cronenberg imagery, you know, like um, yeah. uh, my 18 is a TV and it's the Videodrome TV with the, you know, the gun, the, the flesh gun coming out or whatever you call yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That is awesome, man. Uh, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> a very violent movie. Like, it's not just the gory, it's the, mm. the possessors, the violence of it. It's very... Uh, very visceral. Um, yeah. Anyway, well, I ask I because I, I'm empathetic to it. I'm sympathetic to it. As I age, I find I'm not. You know, I'll make exceptions and watch a new Cronenberg movie or a Brandon Cronenberg movie, uh, or you know, there's some great new horror movies that have come out over the last couple of years. But I feel more affected from it, and I don't know why. But I think age, you know, does it makes me not want to uh, to be as um, hands on in my imagination, so to speak. Uh, so, but I get a lot of people, they just say, not only that they're concerned, uh, uh, they're concerned about not only having violence in their minds, but also just the zany, crazy imagery. Now we know that it fades, but you know, uh, if I can find in you, in your heavy metal soul, any sympathy or whatever, I mean, what would you advise? uh, Can you think of alternatives for, for a person who, you know, might not share that, um, that, that lust yeah. for blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't mean to sound dismissive or uh no no. Um, like if anyone listening to this is is of that uh ilk. Yeah, I didn't didn't mean to say like, oh I'm not I'm too good for that. Uh that's just not how I operate. Like I mm-hmm. uh, I not that I'm a like guy or anything, but like that's what's memorable to me. Um and again I, I do consume a lot of like heavy metal and horror and not that it's all you know horrifically gory or bad or whatever, but it, a lot of it, it uses imagery to tell a bigger story. Right. Like uh, there's a lot of horror movies that are on the surface, like horrific and like scary, like, like bone chilling, but it's like, well, they're, they're telling a very, um, like a very important story. Like the movie relic. Uh, it's an Australian film. It came out last year. Have you seen that one? I haven't seen it. It's, no. a, it's about Alzheimer's and um, it's terrifying, man. Like uh, as somebody who's seen people go through it, it, it was, it depicted Alzheimer's in, um and it's weird there's a scene in it like i don't have to get into too many spoilers but there's a scene where one of the characters like they've they kind of walk through a maze and i i think it was the director kind of showing you what it's like to, to have alzheimer's and they're, they, they don't know where they're going and stuff and right. uh, it's a very intense part of the film and anyway it can be film can be uh and, and the music and stuff can use all this extreme imagery but it's there's usually something more to it it's not doing that for the sake of it it's usually doing that to to usually you know say something so right, yeah. i mean some movies yeah are just doing that for the sake of it, but, yeah, um, yeah yeah if you know what i mean so anyway uh, not to get uh so yeah for people who might be more sensitive to that um you know i guess i guess if you're building your your images like that that's kind of a big thing so maybe don't 
I guess don't pick violent things like don't pick swords or guns or <laughs> right, right. um I mean now now that you're saying that like I, I'm starting to realize how many of my images or weapons are guys from horror movies and stuff or <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, don't, don't pick, don't pick that kind of thing. Right. Um, you want to pick maybe, uh, you know, positive stuff. Some people, you know, um, uh, I mean, I have images, I have teddy bears and rainbows, like literally in my system. And, right. um, those had, those actually have, cause when you memorize too, it's, it's not so much, um, it's not always a story that you remember too, or, or the, 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 the people, like sometimes if I memorize a deck of cards in like 20 seconds, some of my images are so fast and I don't always remember what happened but sometimes i remember the feel of it right so like oh this felt like a star trek character but which one or this felt like happy i'm like okay oh yeah it's a rainbow like sometimes right. it's the feeling you remember and then that that drags you back to it so you you want maybe pick things that have positive associations to you and um yeah instead of like again i'll have two people interacting and if depending on the location if there's a pit maybe the guy pushes him into it so instead of that maybe they're pulling them up they're doing something positive uh right right tickling each other i don't know <laughs> yeah um I, I i think that's very good uh and that whole push pull thing is kind of interesting as well because like let's yeah. say you memorize passwords or whatever and you've got to have uppercase and lowercase you could have something like that so the person is maybe yeah. pushing someone off the uh, the cliff but you know helping them down a cliff in order to remember its lowercase and then pulling them up a cliff to remember its uppercase yeah. or something like that that's really good so yeah yeah you, you don't stop man I, you're always you always got ideas it's, it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call me the mechanic <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean I, I don't know how all that stuff would play out in competition but it, it, it in terms of yeah. long-term retention that those kinds of ideas certainly uh, certainly help. And, you know, that kind of stuff is in Bruno as well. In earlier Renaissance tech uh, manuals, they would say things like have them have the person standing up versus having them sit down uh, for certain functions. Uh, so you could reuse a person to indicate something oh, about a text. Uh, I don't actually yeah. know why they would need to know capitalization and, and lowercase back then, but, you know, whatever. They're, it's in Bruno yeah. um, as a possible... Thing and I, I think I've seen it in other uh, ancient texts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for that. that. That's good. I mean, my first thing when I was thinking is if I didn't want to use the hook or whatever in uh, that movie, it could be tickling uh, with the feathers or something. The same guy, but you know, he's sure. got sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, in full disclosure, I, I already mentioned I use the Cronenberg stuff. Um, my yeah. my chain is not just any generic chain it's uh you know for 62 it's that woman from hellraiser but she's shooting the the chain out of her hand i don't even know if she sh shoots it out of her hand in her in the movie but i have her doing it anyway because yeah it's a queen of uh, queen of clubs so you know i just see that nun or whatever she is from hellraiser just Classic, like, yeah. and the chain just yeah. comes whoosh, out of her hand um with the hooks you know and the little weird face yeah oh yeah <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, I've seen <laughs> but I have again, I do I have detoxed a lot and I've thought about, you know, well, can I can I not be so, you know, head on and just learn it to help others and and try to figure out, you know, alternatives and that's that's part of rethinking smash and scope. I don't know if you know the old Buzan thing with uh smash and scope. Um, no, I don't. I don't remember all, all of the indicators, but you know, it's like sensuality and then music i don't know what it was but it was an acronym yeah. for all the possible characteristics and i just changed it to a simpler version that i use which is cave cogs which is kinesthetic um auditory visual emotional conceptual olfactory gustatory and spatial and i'll just okay. go through, i'll go through those and then i find that it doesn't even matter it doesn't have to be extreme anymore at all because i'll just have like a like there's a sanskrit word i just memorized the other day teshem and uh, I'll just have Tesla driving over a ham. And I just feel like I am Nikola Tesla driving a Tesla over a ham. I'll hear the sound of the soundless engine, you know, squish. And then, you know, I don't really see images in my mind, but um, I'll, I'll have an idea of what ham looks like. And, you know, I'll, what are the emotions? Oh, Tesla's got a new invention. <laughs> it's going to drive over there. I feel excited. And so on and so forth. And then taste the ham. And so that without any violence at all, without any extreme at all, Tesham, no problem. It's just Tesla driving over a ham in a Tesla. 
nice. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it takes a little bit longer than it would if it was like Tesla, you know, beating some dude over the head with a ham, but whatever. Um, <laughs> This is just a nice, soft alternative. And besides which, it's like a meditative text. So the last thing that I want is when I'm, you know, starting to get it into action is, you know, you know just like a nice, yeah. soft, nice, soft Sunday drive that just happens to be going over a ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, I, I, when I was earlier in our conversation, I think I mentioned that when I was, yeah, recalling, I remember this one, there's a palace actually in my home here. Yeah. And it was at a Viking stab in one guy. And then another guy was back, and it, I, yeah, my friends were like, uh, I think I think I said this earlier, like, man, you have a lot of violent imagery, right. and it's funny now that we're talking about this again. It's like, I really do. I don't. <laughs> I've just never. That's something that's never occurred to me. But I mean, it's it's memorable. Um, and like a lot of people, like I avoid. Um, I avoid like some people put a lot of like sexual things in theirs. Uh, I typically avoid that type of thing. Um, that doesn't work for me like that to me that that's where I like that's off limits to me. Whereas like, right. you know, doing something uh, like gory isn't at all, but that's just like, that's just my limit. I don't know. Um, you right. know, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, that's, you give me something to think about. Cause I'm like, oh, right. I just, not, not that I'm saying it, I don't feel bad or I don't think it's wrong, but it's just something I've never thought about. So I'm like, Oh, that's kind of right. interesting. I, so I'm just going to think about that. In a way, it has implications too, right? Because some people ask, why aren't memory techniques taught in schools? And it may be that there's just a lot of ethical people who aren't going to go in there and reveal all their psychological laundry. <laughs> so, yeah, we could have a, the, the school-friendly uh, alternative. Um, yeah. Now, when we talk about your project and so forth, this is yeah. pretty fast recall. Uh, you're not going to hold on to 70 decks for 70 weeks, I, I assume. Um, no, man. No. <laughs> and I'm using all my palaces, right? So it's like, if I did that, I, w I wouldn't be able to practice. <laughs> do you do any long-term retention projects? I, I actually don't. I never really have, other than like, you know, little things, right? Like, um, but nothing, no, nothing huge. Like, I do eventually, um, I got a couple big things I want to do. Like, I want to... Um, I mean, you mentioned uh, Dave Farrow earlier. So he has that world record. So people have actually asked me with this event I'm doing, uh, are you attempting a world record? Because 70 decks, you know, in one, it's one city and it's over the course of a day. Uh, but I said, well, A, Guinness isn't going to just come, you know, come over and hang out with me all day. Right. Uh, but B, no, it's not. Because it's like, it's not being supervised. And I'm viewing the decks multiple times. Dave Farrow's record was, um, he did, he he had the record twice and the second time he did it he did 59 decks i think right uh, and it was single viewing of each card period um now he was able to take as long as he wanted and he took probably close to the time i would to be taken he took like it was i i can't remember it's like 13 hours or 16 hours or something crazy right. um but he recalled nearly all the cards i think it was like he had very very minimal error rate it's pretty insane unreal right. record uh so that, that's all actually a record i i plan to break uh, I don't know when in the next few years, but it is a world record I want to claim. And then, um, and then I also want to break uh, not the world record, but at least the Canadian record for pie memorization. So that would be like the first like serious long term um, retention type of thing I do. So that's something I want to, I might try to do next year. I'm not too sure. I'll, I'll, we'll see how this goes. And um, I got the Memory League World Championships. I'm ranked ninth in the world in Memory League right now. So wow. um, they'll have their world championships i think in january so as long as i stay in the top 16 so i just gotta do my thing next in the next season um where i you know play in my division as long as i do okay in that i should finish in the high enough to qualify for the world championships and that so yeah i'm ninth in the world there right now which is cool um but so th that'll be on um priority too but yeah pi memorizing pi like it i think the canadian records eight thousand something mm -hmm. uh so I, i'd want to hit at least 10 or 12. I was originally thinking I'd want to double it, but that's going to require a lot more palaces. So that's another thing is I got to get my palace game up to snuff for that. So. Right. Right. Didn't yeah. I see, uh, what is his name? Jonas von, von Essen do a hundred thousand digits or something. Um, I don't know. Um, he's done a lot. Uh, I don't know what his exact thing is, but 
I remember popping in on that live and from what I, what I observed, and I don't know if it's true or not, the way that they tested it was, you know, they didn't sit and listen to a hundred thousand digits, but they just had a book of Pi and they were just saying, okay, what's on page 52, what's on page 506. I think they even had a couple of books that they were selecting from. And then he would, oh. he would give a sequence from within it. Um, oh, so he might've been doing, okay. So there's actually um, a different challenge called uh, a Pi matrix thing. Oh. So how that works is you, um, so you, you memorize the first 10,000 digits of pi, okay? And you got to know it forwards and backwards. Um, so Nelson Dellis has teased that he's going to be attempting, I think, a world record in this. So uh, a guy actually, um, a memory athlete, um, I, don't, I can't remember where he's from. He's from, he's in Europe somewhere. Martin Nilsson, he, I, I, I got him on Facebook. Uh, he broke the world record for that um, last year. So how it works is um, they, uh, they recite five digits of pi. And it can be, um, and it's in group, sorry, it is in groups of five. So it's not just any random five, but they split it every chunk of digits into five digits. Um, I think after starting after the, the 3.14 and um, you have to recite the five digits before and the five digits after it. Um, and then you get like one point or whatever. And I think it's, um, and then they, they ask you, they, they, and they just read off. And then I think, I don't know what the what you have to get to for to qualify, but I think it's like fifty or something like that. And he was able to do it in like fourteen minutes or something. I can't remember, but yeah, that's what they do is they read five digits and you gotta say the five before it and the five after it. Right. Um and it's anywhere in the ten thousand. So it's in, in it's a completely wild yeah. thing <laughs> to do. Um yeah, I so maybe I don't know if that's what you saw, maybe. Um maybe. Um yeah. I think I said Johannes von Essen, but I think it's Jonas von Essen or Jonas von Essen. It is Jonas. Probably, sorry, it is Jonas. I'm probably thinking yeah. Johannes uh, Malo or something like this. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the reason why I, I correct myself, I don't even know if I made that mistake. But I also wanted to ask, like, when you're doing cards, do you often get that feeling? You're like, wait a second, did, I think I just did that card wrong, or I said that name wrong, or whatever, and then you go back and correct things, or are you usually pretty good straight through, or what's your um, what's your dude? In, I make in recall go back and change things rate, so to speak. <laughs> well, when I'm memorizing, like, cause I do speed cards, I, I go as fast as I can. Right. So, um, today I did, I actually set a personal record. Um, I did a deck in 19 sec, 19.47 seconds. Right. Um, on memory leak and I forgot to take it. I always take screenshots. So I have, my, I forgot. To. <laughs> I texted my buddy and like, Oh, I did it. And then I click continue. And I went, Oh no, I didn't, I don't have proof. Like it's, it's not, I know I did it, but it's nice to have it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in that that deck was okay, but I had decks today where uh, I go I blow blow through it and uh, at the end I realize like or as I'm going, I'm like, oh shoot, I think I memorized that wrong. And I'm like still hitting the forward button and I'm like trying to encode new images as I'm trying to figure out this old one and it's a complete mess. So there are times where I realize I gotta stop for a sec. Um, and then I'll 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 click back a couple times because I'm doing this all digitally and then I'll, Oh, right, right, right. There's this one. And then I'll go forward again. So there are times where um, I'm moving probably a bit too fast and a couple with the phonetics, there's a few images. I'm still like not laser sharp, like not laser click on a lot of them. I, I am, but there's a few where it takes me an extra, like, you know, maybe 10th of a second to, to jog that, that image in my head. So yeah, sometimes um, I'll go back or sometimes I'll, I'll encode the wrong image completely. Uh, and then I'll finish and then I'll go through and I'll have a couple cards left. And I'll be like, what the heck? And like, I know this image was here, but then, and then you're like, oh, I remember, you know, I memorized two Queens of Spades. And like, so where does it, where does this hit? So I have to make an educated guess as to, yeah. uh, I, I probably memorized this, like I've screwed this one up before. I've probably memorized this one wrong. And I, sometimes I, and I actually can usually figure it out. Um, sometimes I don't. And, you know, I, I post my, you know, personal records or good scores on, social media a lot but like the one thing i don't you don't see is all the times i i screw up <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and with the videos right like i posted a video of me doing a deck i haven't done a speed cards in a bit so i posted a video of me on memory league doing a deck in like 22 seconds last week which was cool because they actually I, I posted it like a few days later a local paper did a story and they had a link it up to that video in it so it was like perfect timing but like i was like man what they didn't see was like the eight tries i did before that where uh i did the deck and it wasn't it, the speed wasn't good enough for me or I did it. In, I did it in 22 seconds, but I completely botched it. And like, 
you know, I couldn't remember four or five images and I had them out of order and, you know, I actually mm-hmm. only got seven cards, right? Um, you know, what they see is the me doing 52 cards and going, yeah, look at me. So, you know, when you, I, I guess, you know, it, that's the thing about social media is like, you don't, you don't see, uh, you only see the good stuff a lot of the time. So right. I'm guilty of that. Like, I don't, I don't talk about my errors or shortcomings a lot. So I probably should more. Um, well, you could always do a reel yeah. uh, or just like a montage of all the, all the mess ups. <laughs> I should, you know what? I should, I should do that one day. Just do a bunch of decks and just screenshot everything. And go. Yeah, this yeah. is what a normal day looks like. Is yeah. it like, you know? And some days I'm on, right? And then some days I'm just I'm slow. Brain's not, you know, things aren't firing like they normally do, and I'm just off. And you have off days, and it's like, that's normal though, right? And um, yeah, I definitely make mistakes doing speed cards. And the the faster I've gotten, um, like I've never screwed up this much doing speed cards. Like I used to, you know. I was always quite accurate, you know, make the odd mistake, but as you get quicker and quicker, same with numbers. Like I, I've never had so many screw ups doing due digits, but I'm moving at speeds. I've never moved at. So it's going to yeah. happen. Right. And eventually yeah. I'll hopefully get my accuracy. Maybe I should slow down and work on my accuracy more, but uh, well, how do you, how do you keep your attitude strong and, you know, deal with failures and frustrations around anything like that? Or is it just, you know, part of the game? Part of the game, yeah. It's like just like a day at the office, and some days suck. And I'm like, oh man, like I, I'm really, I'm really good at being talking negative to myself. Right. <laughs> I, I shouldn't do that. I'm yeah. such an idiot. I, I, I knew that was a, you know, I knew that was a pair of sunglasses, but it put put a backpack there instead. What was I doing? Right. Uh, but <laughs> it's just funny. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just part of it, man. And like I, I make mistakes, and like it when it really gets me is when. I'll be doing like like a, a memory league match competing, and when I make mistakes there, it kills me because I'm like, man, yesterday, like I was practicing and I did all these awesome scores, and now I'm, I, you know, maybe I had a bad night of sleep or just again just an off day, or I, I made a mental mistake, like I didn't. Ha- There's no good reason. I just I just screwed up, um, mm-hmm. and then it doesn't reflect you know your true skill level sometimes. So I feel like not only did I lose, but the people watching this like. I, I don't look as good as I, you know, as I, this isn't me. I, you know, I'm usually better than this. So it's, there's a lot of ego stuff involved in it. That's something I got to remind myself of that. Like, it doesn't, that doesn't really matter. Like at the end of the day, like I do this cause I love it and it's, it's meaningful and fulfilling to me. Like a lot of people, again, memory sports isn't like in your event, it's cool. The one you want to do, cause there's, there's cool stuff and you can, you can learn stuff to take with you in real life. And you know, it's not often a guy pulls you on the side of the road, puts a gun to your head and says, memorize the stick of cards or I'll kill you. Mm. Uh, uh, if it happens, I'm ready. Right. But, yeah. um, you know, there's not a lot of situations where you need to do that. So it's like, people wonder why, why we do these things like this. And I mean, I like competing and I, I like pushing myself and challenging myself. And, um, it just memory sports in and of itself is super fulfilling to me. Um, mm-hmm. so th- that's what it's about. Right. And, yeah. um, the memory sports community is, is amazing by the way, I, as you know, like you've had a lot of awesome people on the show, authors and stuff. And the whole community has just been, is really welcoming and they, they make it easier and they're supportive so like we need, if you do have a bad day and stuff it's like we all do right um yeah, yeah yeah so that's just part of it and you just gotta get used to like i grew up as like a gym rat and i still work out when i can get get in the gym and like yeah you'd have days where you'd be going for for record lifts and um you did all the mental prep and everything and you don't hit it and it would suck and then other days you'd come in and you had a bad night of sleep you, d- you don't warm up and you hit a deadlift record i'm like the heck is this it's like the same thing happens with, with memory sports sometimes i'll have you know, the baby wakes up and i'll have a horrific night of sleep and then i'll set a personal record like and i'll be feeling like tired out of my mind and i, I don't know how it works mm. so but i mean i, I i'll sell it i'll still celebrate it <laughs> um yeah. you know like there's no rhyme or reason sometimes for for some of the results but the, the like the one thing i i think too that i've thought a lot about is so when i do mess up i, I don't just click next and leave it with regardless of what an event or whatever I'm doing is I'll review it and try to see where I messed up. I don't just move on and forget about it. I'll go, I'll go through my deck of cards or my numbers and try to, Oh, or here's why I thought it was this when it was this. So sometimes I got two images are too similar and I gotta, I gotta make new ones. Right. I know. I, Oh, I I didn't realize I had two sumo wrestlers, you know, like uh, E Honda and Yokozuna, right. One's in a video game. One's a real guy, but maybe, maybe you mix them up, right. Stuff like that. Or if I, um, you know, I realized the phonetics of one image are too similar to another. I'm like, yeah, I should change this. So uh, point of self-reflection 
The other thing though is when you have successes, sometimes like I'll do a deck of cards and I'll I'll hit submit and I'm like, this is 50-50. Like I there's a few images. I think I got them in the right place. Oh, I got it right. Nice. I move on. But I'm like, what I want to start, what I, what I've wanted to start doing, and and I have is like reviewing those two, because like it could have just as easily been a mistake, right? Because like I wasn't actually sure. So it's like I, I should still review that and see where I went right and why it worked and what could have went wrong. So, um, I don't know. I've been just been thinking because I've been hitting a lot of walls where I am. Um, I mean, I don't want to say oh I'm at this high level and it's whatever, but it, you you get to a point where you're really good at something where you, you gotta you gotta poke and prod to find okay here where can I improve right yeah, yeah. and so reviewing like reviewing successes to me I've been wondering like is that it's probably almost as important as reviewing failures because like if 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 I wasn't confident in what I just like if it is a deck of cards I nailed hundred percent like I'm not too worried but if it was one where it was even a little shaky or like I, I did a bunch of words on memory league and one thing I do is because I, I memorize my words in pairs right two at a time. I'll flip the, I'll get the words right, but I'll flip them. So I'll hit submit and sometimes I'll get 50 out of 50. I'm like, whoo, but I'm like, well, there was just a good a chance I could have, like, I got a few of them, I guess on. the words are right, but like, I could have got 30 there if half my words were reversed. So again, I'll mm-hmm. go through and figure out, okay, what went right here? What, what can I replicate next time to do this again? Not, mm-hmm. not like just looking for things I've done wrong. Like when it's all, when I get the red, the red, and I'm, you know, trying to correct my errors, but looking at the good things too and going, okay, what, what actually worked here? Because like I think reviewing your successes uh, is is just as important. I can't. This is something I heard a couple of years ago, and I cannot remember where I heard it. And that's something that stuck with me, and it's been really it's kind of bugging me. I don't I don't feel like I do it enough. So that's something I'm going to commit to doing too to help me out. Yeah, yeah, it's important. I mean, reviewing both a both sides of things and getting a good fleshed out view is yeah super important and it's it's, the ego is so seductive i mean i don't do anything like what you're doing in in terms of speed or volume but i remember having some guys here in the in the studio i was on their podcast accelerated strength podcast if memory serves here in australia and they said hey can you show us something with the cards and i was like hell yeah stupid idea because it was like 6 p.m i'm so tired they just did like an hour and a half interview with me and we're going into like all the nitty-gritty of the of the meditation stuff and the sanskrit and yada yada i'm just like totally drained and um oh yeah whatever so i do the cards and uh i got one wrong and i spend you know the next day and a half with my little sanskrit are my thoughts useful? How do they behave? Because I can't get rid of that one damn card that I missed. It's <laughs> just like, why well, I couldn't have had, you know, and it was just, and it, even compensating for it after. So, you know, then I just like, I made the mistake and I just thought, I'm going to show these guys some magic tricks. And I just whipped out my best magic tricks and I made zero errors. Yeah. With trick. And when I do magic, you can't make errors because I know enough little, you know, things that if I do screw something up, I just make it look like it was a mistake on purpose. And then, then you know, two seconds later, there's some new miracle coming out. But um, in any case, like it'll mess with you if you don't have, uh, have some tools. Yeah. It is funny that you, you said you, you, uh, yeah, that <laughs> I can relate to that. I had, a uh, after my first Canadian mind sports uh, national victory, I did. Uh, I, I did the media circuit the second time. Not as big. I was only on a couple of things. But the first time, I was on all these radio shows. I was on a few news shows, and this AM radio, this AM state show back over like Ottawa, hit me up uh, like a week later. Like, hey, can we interview? I'm like, sure. So I called him up, and it happened like really quick. I ended up on the show, and it was actually one of my favorite interviews. Um, I can't. I, I've since tried to find it uh, with the link I saved and it's been taken off. So I, I don't mm-hmm. think it's available anymore, but um, the guy interviews me is a great interview. Uh, had fun doing it. And then at the end uh, he goes, all right, every guy, thanks for calling. Hey, by the way, uh, makes a joke about me having a good memory. And then says, do you remember my name? And I go, uh, yeah, it's, it's George. <laughs> all right. We'll see you later. Like I had no idea what the guy said was. <laughs> I could not <laughs> remember his name. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like I said, it, it kind of happened really quick. I couldn't, I didn't even know what show I was on. They just kind of messaged me and got on the show right away. Um, I, I had no idea who I was talking. Right. And, uh, <laughs> but I, I said that and they laughed so hard. Like I, I made sure I said it, uh, in, in, you know, like like in a, in a punchline way. So they, uh, they knew I, they thought I was joking. <laughs> right. Um, which I was, but yeah. I, uh, and then I, I was like, all right, see you guys. And I got out of there really quick. Uh, and yeah, I, I didn't actually know the guy's name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, it happens. It happens. It's uh, yeah. Life can go by fast. Now, yeah, yeah. we're not always on, right? <laughs> the, the flash. <laughs> um, yeah. You got time for one sort of wrap up question, or one little wrap up to- yeah, topic? Yeah. Yeah. So, as I understand it, you got two kids. I assume you have a job, and uh, you're posting on social media every day. Where do you have the time for all this practice and training and social media posting and being a career person and a dad? Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, my 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 social media posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what I'm doing is there's more. There's more posts. Yeah, I need an assistant. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I honestly I do like 90 percent of my training at work. So I use my, my coffee boss breaks, my lunch break. <laughs> yeah, I use. <laughs> no, I, it's just uh, I go on my coffee break and I work at a computer. And like where my cubicle is, it's actually really well placed. Um, there's a bit of traffic and noise, but it's like I, I actually have a pair of ear canceling or noise canceling like earmuffs. Yeah. I have I have a pair here at home. I use when I train at home, but I, uh, I have some in my my drawer at work. Pull them out. I probably look like a weirdo. I sit there on my breaks and just do my computer memorizing. And I do all, almost all my training at work on my breaks, right. um, and in my lunch break, and that's all I do. I don't even yeah, I don't do anything else. I just train on my breaks and then I go back to work and. I have to use my time because with the kids at home, um, even just with one before, I, I didn't have a lot of time. And then once she got on a good sleep schedule, uh, if I were able to get up in the morning, um, I could do stuff in the morning or for her naps. But when I was home, but now with two and they're, you know, he's a baby. She's, yeah, they're all over the place. It's like, you know, it's, yeah, there's very, very little time at home to do that. Um, there, there is some afternoons, like on the weekends. But yeah, most of it's at, is, is at work. That That's basically what I've had to do. And yeah, it's not as, yeah. And that's even where I do like my memory league matches. I'll, I'll set up a, uh, there's like a little room I can use there and I can, I can just book it and um, log into there and be a memory sports CD at work and, and all that. So it works out really good. Right, um, right. That's, that's basically, if I, if I couldn't do that at work, like, I don't know when I, I don't know where I'd find the time. Like, I, I wouldn't have time to do what I do. I don't think mm-hmm. so. Yeah. And then on like on Thursday nights, like I do, I've been doing those live streams where I do my marathon uh, cards events, again, just building up to the the huge event. Um, so that's one, like, but I don't have, I can't do that every night. <laughs> you know, that's my one night a week to do that. So. Right. Right. Yeah. It's hard. It's not, yeah. So it's hard to find the time, but like, that's what I got to do. So it's what I do. Well, that's dedication, yeah. you know, and yeah, man. do you have any insight into why you're that way? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess like I, I'm, a, I'm just a dedicated person. Like when I, um, you know, I know a lot of people throw around the term like OCD, like, oh, you know, I, I like to vacuum or I, I'm a clean person. I have OCD. Huh? Yeah. But like, but they don't, you know, it gets overused a lot. Like, um, I don't know. I always like me and some, some family members, uh, like legit have OCD. Like I, I, I don't like, I, I don't, I wouldn't have it like diagnosed, but to the point where like, it, it's, it's a bit of a problem sometimes. Mm. So I think that bleeds over into like me getting obsessive over, um, I don't know, perfecting things and stuff like that. Like it used to be like that, um, before I had some, like, I, I don't work out as much because like, uh, anyway, I got more into mental sports because of, I think I said this on a previous podcast, as some physical issues come up, I, I can't physically do things I used to like I, I still work out and I keep active but I can't play softball or you know power lift or I can't do anything like that that I want to I that's usually how I used to uh you know uh exert myself so now I do it mentally and uh, I've I, I love it so um I guess part of it too is because it's my outlet right. uh yeah it is just something I'm passionate about but I don't know if, if part of it yeah comes from that by a bit a bit of obsessiveness over over other things in my life that don't matter. And, um, mm-hmm. so I've chosen to try to try to hone it in, into this and, uh, yeah, I get like, but like unhealthily obsessive over certain things. Um, so like with memory stuff, it gets, it gets a bit crazy sometimes. So I got to hone it in a little. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah, th- I, I think that's why. And, um, but yeah, I'm just a dedicated guy and I, I just love doing this. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's something I thought about why I do that. I don't know if it is cause I have, a bit of like obsessive compulsive actual tendencies, not, not, you know, jokingly. And, uh, or if it's just cause I'm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a personal, like it's just something I was born with where I, 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 you know, I, I can, 
push myself and you know dedicate myself to anything I want. I, that's something that's something I've always been really good at. Um, right. And yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's always interesting. You know, there there's a story behind things, but then there's just do we have any free will in it? It's just you know something. Yeah, a book, man. A book lands on your. Uh, shelf or you're in your hands and then the next thing you know wow i'm gonna do this it's just uh, who can explain well, that's what happened to me and yeah. uh, it's like yeah it's like you know I, I like to think it's like when you i don't know when you think about uh like i think about meeting my wife and stuff and it's like yeah you'd, you'd like to think you you would have met eventually if you know whatever chance encounter didn't happen right so, ah we you know we would have met eventually and but it's like you, you know you don't know that same with this it's like I'd like to think I would have discovered memory sports had this guy not basically handed, you know, I, I got, I got moonwalking with Einstein as a Christmas gift, but it was basically a chance encounter that I learned about the book through some of my work. And uh, it's like, if that didn't happen, where would I, you know, I'd like to think I would have discovered it, but maybe not. And yeah. It's like, yeah, you get in all these philosophical questions. It's like, yeah. How much control do we have over things? And, right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's troubling to think about sometimes. <laughs> I want to keep focused on, you know, your project and, and bring yeah. it back because yeah. you get me yeah. started on free will. Uh, we, we won't stop. But, uh, <laughs> Dude, I don't want to. Yeah. We're going to have to split this into two parts. <laughs> right. Right. But um, just remind us, when is this happening? Where can people find it? I'll obviously have links and make sure that, you know, this yeah. comes out in good time to help raise awareness around that and email and all that jazz. But um, just, you know, mention it all again, the dates, et cetera, and um, all the important stuff that people need to know. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to here, I'm just looking up the link. So um, the actual link, I know you'll link to it, but it's, uh, it's joy. So to it's, this is a link to my Alzheimer's fundraiser page um, where you We're can donate a little your more. picture um, in what looks like Europe somewhere. Yeah, it is. So I'm just looking at the link right now. Oh, okay. It's uh, join BC. Okay. dot alzheimer dot ca slash go to slash braided adam so i know you'll probably link to it in the show notes yeah yeah but um yeah so there you can donate to my uh to my thing uh to my events um donations over 15 dollars, you automatically get a tax receipt for so if that's something that's important to you um and um on all my social media so like on instagram and twitter and all those uh Braden Explosion is my name. I, I'm posting about that a lot, uh, about my memory sports stuff. I have a YouTube channel. Um, same thing. Uh, just look up Braden Explosion or, or look that up on Twitch as well. Um, right. And you'll find me but uh, talking about this event, posting my memory stuff. Um, and yeah, and if you can also Google, like uh, if you go to the Alzheimer uh, Society of BC. Uh, so the, this program I'm doing it through is called Anything for Alzheimer's. So it's like this program they have set up where people can just, yeah, run their own event. So that's kind of how, how I'm doing the program I'm doing this through. So if you Google like Braden Adams, anything for Alzheimer's, like um, you should be able to pull something up or you can go to their, their page and search my name. And there's all sorts of ways you can find it. If you didn't memorize the link, I just read out. <laughs> right. right. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so I, I don't know. Do you feel like I'm leaving anything out there? I feel like I covered. I, I was just going to ask you: Is there anything yeah. you wanted to talk about that I didn't, you know, get us to, or that didn't come up? Um, um, I feel like I went on so many tangents. Um, I felt like that last time though, and people liked it, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, I'm not trying to close the interview early. Uh, I, no, I, it's okay. I also want to respect your time, and I know you you've got yeah. uh, a family and so forth, but. I'm happy to jam, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no worries. I also um, want to make sure we get that that information out. And again, I will have those links, and just mm -hmm. so people know, I've already thrown in a few magnetic clamshells. And um, yeah, uh, and thank you, thank you, much appreciated. Well, I um, mean, yeah, you know, it's one of those things. It's just like, damn, I wish I had that idea. Uh, so you know, you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> yeah, I actually um, had a few people. They're like, oh man, this is such a good idea. Like they're almost like, you know. Yeah. I beat beat him to it type of thing, but uh, I mean, I don't care if someone else wants to do the exact same thing. I'll donate to them, and this is awesome. You know, it's a good cause. So, well, I, I think you know, once that you, since that you did it, then there's there's every reason just to double down. And you know, I, I'm yeah, just man. thinking on that uh, on the day after or something. I don't know if you if you would think this was a good idea, but the day after or something, or the day before or whatever, I was thinking I'll get on a stream and I'll just recite all my Sanskrit, and 
you know, say if you super chat this, then I'll send all the super chats over to your, your, um, your cause that you're doing, sure, for. Man. but I don't want to also, you know, jump on, you know, jump on your coattails or anything, but it would be kind of like a, an interesting sort of thing to, um, to maybe get some more funding, uh, or we could yeah, potentially yeah. figure out how to stream your thing. Like I could probably watch your live stream and have it stream off my channel and have some ticker saying, you know, go here to, to donate to, uh, you know, Alzheimer. Is it Alzheimer's society? Yeah, man. Columbia? I'd be um, open to any, any type of support or collaboration. I would love that. Um, yeah. if, if that's something you want to do, that'd be, that'd be awesome. But, um, yeah. if nothing else, we'll have this video and, uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love that. And I I think uh, that would be a neat thing to think about more in the future is like, what could we do for more Alzheimer's um, societies uh, as groups uh, or as individuals, etc. So. Because yeah, I mean, there's so much, there's been so many breakthroughs too. And like, yeah. you know, in that, in that area, it's like, it feels like, I mean, there's this new drug, I guess the FDA approved. I've heard controversial things about, um, but um, I mean, it seems like there's, you know, more and more stuff coming out every year about, um, you know, stuff we're learning about Alzheimer's, things that are working to slow it down and delay it. And in some cases, it uh, it being reversed, like I think you mentioned here, um, you said you had your, your mom had early onset that was reversed. Um, yeah. yeah. So there's th there's things out there that, you know, I mean, the, the the more you know attention and you know funding and stuff we can, we can do. I mean that, yeah. You know why not? But. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that obviously gives me the fear of it and I feel my age coming on and so forth. I don't, I don't know if anything bad's going to happen to me, but you know, I'm not going to hope and wish and pray that that memory training is going to, you know, somehow save me from those problems. It's like the biggest nightmare. Um, yeah. Actually, yeah. Maybe, here's another idea that could be with this. I, I finished a, the first draft of a novel recently and um, mm. just, just two days ago, 44 days straight, 2000 words a day and no real breaks um <laughs> it's a killer project like in terms of killing me but uh anyway it's about a detective in vancouver which i know you're nearby um who uh or maybe you're in it now i, I remember you were in chilliwack i think uh, um yeah still yeah chilliwack. um in any case he's got early onset cognitive decline and uh he's solving cases and uh that's all I'll say for now. But anyway, I was thinking, yeah, cool, maybe, just, just now I'm thinking it'd be cool if I ever do finish it and launch it. Then, you know, part of the proceeds or whatever, uh, if everybody buys my silly novel, <laughs> that could go to the Alzheimer's uh, thing. And maybe in my second draft, I can have the Alzheimer's uh, Society of British Columbia somehow in there as a as a, a location. That's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, obviously, the, the guy's using memory techniques and... Uh, I wanted an alternative to Sherlock Holmes. Like, I must go to my Mary Palace. It's more like, I have to go to my Mary Palace because my brain is rotting and I'm going to lose my career. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's like, it's, you know, you can't outrun your genetics, right? Like I said, it seems like it runs in my family a bit too. And um, I mean, I, I sure hope doing this memory stuff helps. There's no evidence that it does. Mm. Um, you know, I take, I, I do things in my own life to help. I mean, the one thing I don't do well enough is sleep, which, um, I, there, there's a pretty renowned sleep doctor, uh, Matthew Walker. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's, um, he's done some pretty amazing work in the sleep of like in, in the, in the area of sleep basically. And, uh, he, I've heard him say before that the number one predictor of Alzheimer's is sleep, like the amount of sleep you get, yeah. um, whether somebody will get it or not. I mean, obviously I've also heard it said, if you have a brain, you're at risk for Alzheimer's, like nobody's, you know, I mean, from it, yeah. um, but. So that's always one thing that troubled me because like, oh, I don't like, I, you know, I, I take certain, certain things in my diet and I do, I do other things, you know, I exercise, do my memory training and, you know, try to eat good, but it's like, I don't think I sleep enough <laughs> and that's probably a problem. So that's one thing in my, in my life, I gotta, I think I gotta clean up a bit, but I mean, mm -hmm. past that, it's like, you know, you, you can't control anything. So like you, you do what you can and, you know, things you can't control. Otherwise you try not to worry about it because, yeah. you know. Actually, I think there is evidence that this kind of training helps uh, is that right? not, not only reduce impact, but potentially uh, avoid problems. So Christine Till, you can look at her CogMed research um, and yeah. some of the split tests against that. Uh, I know Lynn Kelly cites a, a number of things. And then 
the question is, what do we apply it to? Because there's a lot of research that shows if you get a second language, you're going to get potentially up to 32 years of fortication against things like Alzheimer's and dementia. So is that it, right? Yeah, yeah, you can, you know, I don't want to, I, we're, 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 we're doing your thing, but if people go to magnetic method.com forward slash bilingualism, I have the research there and sure. I've, uh, I've felt it myself. I mean, I feel so much sharper when I'm doing language learning. And although I've let my German lapse a little bit, you know, like it's, it's, an, it's, it's considered a little bit of an insurance policy and I did it all of well, not all, but mnemonics were a huge part of it. So, um, I, and cool. I feel yeah. I feel great effects from basically memorizing a little bit of Sanskrit every day, so or at least reciting what I've memorized. So, yeah, anyway, that's cool, man. We're that's gonna cool. uh, yeah make sure but, this gets out in good time so that it helps sure. yeah. support what you're doing. And uh, yeah, so August twenty eighth uh, is the date, and that's BC time, so it'll be August 29th where you are, right. <laughs> in like early in the morning or something. What's your twenty um, eighth? In, my 28 your image um it's a bible so mm-hmm. it spells like niv like if i'm using just my, my little two digits that i have handy uh right right NIV, like, which is like a translation the uh, of the bible nice Eight, yeah one of the many ones um that's a good one <laughs> yeah so it was just yeah. a weird because i couldn't think of anything or there's a couple i had but like they're too similar to other images in my big system and that one just came take into me like, oh this works so mm-hmm. i use like there's a couple of websites um uh, major system generation websites like numsy is a really good one you just oh, type okay. in your type in whatever however many numbers and it generates all the different words that show up for that number combination um, right, right. And, uh, I, th- I anyway so i think it, it must have popped in on there because i don't think i would have thought thought of that one on my own but uh i use yeah. um i think his name was shipwreck the navy guy from gi joe oh yeah cool yeah. <laughs> all right so august 28th August 28th. I'll be, yeah, it'd be, um, I don't know what time exactly, probably like eight or nine in the morning, my time. Um, and yeah, it'll start. And like, I, I probably won't be talking a ton during the memorization. Um, and that'll go, like I'm doing 70 decks and I'm going to like, if you want to, I can explain what I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to memorize all the decks and sevens. So I'm going to memorize decks one through seven and then do those ones again. And then I'm going to do eight through 14, do those again. I'm going to work all the way up to 35. And then I'm going to start at one again, go one through 35 again, and kind of just like really solidify them. Right. And then I'm going to do that exact thing on the back half. And then I'm going to try and um, I might go through them all a fourth time, just start to finish. And then I'm going to kind of go through them in my head, see where there's gaps. But anyway, it, it'll be kind of boring. I'll, I'll go through them probably six or seven times total. And then, and then recall starts. And then that's when we can have a little fun. Like hopefully I'm, again, I'm feeling confident. And again, there's no time constrictions per se, other than me getting tired and wanting to go to bed. Um, <laughs> so like uh, I can start recall whenever I, whenever I want, like what I, what I'm doing this on too, I didn't really talk about this is, so I'm streaming myself um, using the IAM training software, which Katie from Odin Lance Sherhart um, developed. I don't know if anyone else worked on it. But it's a popular memory training website where you can train all the traditional, typical events in a, in a traditional memory sports setting, not like memory league where it's all, uh, it's all you know quick, and, quick and fast. Uh, right. This is more traditional, but you can do custom trials. So, Katie Kermode had to actually tweak uh, the display, the programming to make sure this is going to work for me because it's got to be. I got to be able to look at seventy different decks, and then that it, it would overlap with the time because because of the amount of room it takes. Mm. Um, it it would overlap with the timer. So she had to like reconfigure a few things for me, right. uh, but I'm going to be doing it all in there. So as long as I don't accidentally hit the enter button a couple of times, <laughs> who knows? Uh, or, um, you know, I, I got to make sure I'm not, you know, getting, getting too careless with what I'm doing, but yeah, um, I'll do it all in there and then I can start the re. So I'm probably going to set like two 12 hour timers on. So one, one will be the memo period. I'm not going to use it all. And then I'll probably set another 12 hour timer for recall. Won't use that all, but that way I don't, set six hours and then realize, oh, shoot, I need another hour. You know, then the event's shot, you know? So I can give myself as much time as I want. Uh, and then during the recall, I can have a little fun because uh, I'll hopefully be confident. And, you know, I'll have them all up here and pretty good. And um, again, I might not talk too much, but I'll talk a bit. And I might try to get some people. I don't quite know Twitch that well, actually. So I'm going to try and get maybe some people that can pop in and 
commentate. Maybe while during memorization, they can do that too. I got a, I got some logistical things to figure out. So yeah, it'll be, and you know what, it'll be boring, but, um, be I, don't a lot think, of, I don't think it will. <laughs> there'll be a lot of people. Well, there's going to be a lot of people in the chat having fun, I think. And yeah, like, yeah. I got, I know I got a bunch of memory buddies that are looking forward to it and like, they're fun guys. So like, they'll be, I'm sure entertaining all the spectators. And I mean, I, I've been in, I've already been in the local paper. I've advertised it a bit. So like I might get, there'll be people I have no idea who they are sh showing up and saying hi. And I've had a few donations come in where I have no idea who they are, uh, which is awesome. So, um, I mean, yeah, anyway, so I, I think it'll be a good time and, uh, yeah. So, well, I'm <laughs> we'll going to do all, I'm going to do all I can to, uh, you know, bring attention to it and thank you for, yeah. you know, sharing your expertise as, as part of that. And, uh, I yeah. got the Australian time zone working both for and against me, but I'll see what I can do to, to pop in. And, uh, I'm just, look, I admire yeah. it so much. I think it's just a genius and thank you, you know, your expertise is is incredible and that you're so caring and generous uh, to share it with us is uh, much appreciated. Yeah. My, my pleasure. And I, I feel too, like this, some of the stuff I say and the systems I use are so can be so complicated. It is hard to explain, um, you know, in a short amount of time and without visuals too, the stuff. I mean, if anyone ever wants to ask not to steal your thunder or anything, but if people have questions about this stuff, um specifically like it's like oh that's kind of interesting or you know i'd like to more know more about how those card pairs work and stuff like that uh yeah hit, hit me up on my social media just look up rate explosion send me a message or whatever like i i'm down to talk memory with anybody anytime like like yeah. and like you are <laughs> well yeah that's very generous and maybe what we can do is after you're recovered we can do a follow-up and maybe do it maybe do what we're doing now but as a live stream and we can watch any questions that come in uh, and that'd be sweet dude have, have, um, yeah I, have some yeah. slides or have uh, the the competition software open on a cool. on a screen or whatever, and we can play around and show people stuff. What what's going on? That'd be sweet. I'm on, I it's conveniently timed, so that's my Saturday of the first day of my vacation. So like, as soon as that's done, and I made the joke earlier that the event won't be fun for me. It's just because I'm going to be so tired. It's going to be very very tough. But yeah, right. it's very specifically timed. So then my vacation. It's going to kick into full gear soon the day after this event. So I can right. relax after. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. I would love to do some sort of follow up and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot about myself doing this. And uh, right, right. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure how to say it, but uh, me, Palacio de Memoria, Su Palacio de Memoria. <laughs> My memory palace is your memory palace. So anytime you want to come and jam, we will, uh, <laughs> we will do it. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Sounds cool. good. All right, brother. Thanks for the time. And, uh, I can't wait yeah. to, you know, uh, get this out there and thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, man. Anytime is, I love talking to you. Pleasure to be on here. And I, your show is great too, man. You're doing a real service. So, uh, I, yeah, keep, keep it going, man. Well, thank you for listening to it and thanks for yeah. saying so. <laughs> Appreciate it. You bet. Well, I want to thank Braden for the time he spent taking us through the details of how he's working towards memorizing so many decks of cards. I hope you've been able to generate some takeaways for your own practice, and if so, please let us know in the comments. Likewise, if you have any questions, pop them in and I'll save them up for the next time Braden and I record a conversation. And if you want to support Braden's funding drive now, please visit magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash BCALZ. Of course, any donation you make to Alzheimer's societies around the world will also be a good thing. And as always, you can pitch in by simply hitting that thumbs up, leaving us a comment, and sharing this around with your network. To watch Braden's event itself on August 28th, visit twitch.tv forward slash Braden Explosion. Thanks so much for being part of this community and stay tuned for more magnetic interviews with Memory Masters coming soon. And if you liked the detail in this discussion, make sure to check out my conversation with Ron White next. Until next time, special thanks to our channel members and keep exercising that brain and that mind of yours. It's the only one you've got and it's up to you to keep it magnetic.